Hello, hello, yes, I can. Yeah, no stress. <laughs> didn't wanna <laughs> didn't want to bother your wife there. Yeah, there's some technical setup stuff here right now. I shouldn't be going live in like right now I'm going live in Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. So it's quite a quite a setup we got here. Uh hopefully that's gonna be working. I think people yeah, they can probably hear us right now. I should probably turn that down. It's becoming uh live soon screen so yeah for anybody watching let me know if you have any questions you can also join us via zoom i'm gonna drop that in the chats i should be able to just uh plug the link once join us on zoom all right oh shit that just uh pasted that let's see where's the facebook I can't post comments from fa to Facebook here. I need to open that up. But yeah, how, how's your week, Jeremy? Let me know if you have any specific questions. Looks like we're going to be talking about uh, how to produce content, <laughs> plan, produce. Oh, my good stuff. Perfect. Awesome. That was that was the whole wheels guy, right? Or any, like, any any other clients? Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Let's let's book a one-on-one -on -one call then. Talk about that soon. Cool. All right. Yeah. Let me let me test the video here in Zoom. Probably not gonna be too many people joining here. Yeah, I had a problem with the email going out. Facebook stopped me from tagging people in the comments. <laughs> Apparently that's against terms of service. Yes. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then we're, we're going to be also, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, that's going to be added like next week. We're going to be doing the, there's going to be like one live session like these ones that's also streamed to the group and then uh, two kind of private group coaching sessions with just you and the other beta customers. That's like Varun, Dean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to like, that's where you spill all the secret sauce, right? So uh, like also talk about confidential things, of course. Like we might not be able to map out the whole, whole wheel content strategy in this call here because again we're live streaming but yeah that's where we're gonna do the group coaching sessions cool so yeah it's gonna be like five more minutes then I'm gonna watch into things here Let's see if and how i can get some it's so confusing live streaming to multiple platforms okay But yeah, if you don't mind, we could use your uh, use them as an example. Then whole wheels, like if uh, I mean, if you haven't signed any NDAs, <laughs> we might be able to brainstorm some content ideas here on this uh, call today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're not gonna. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like we're gonna. Maybe use that as some example. I was, I was figuring out that maybe use a random niche generator and then we're going to use that to get a random example here and I'm going to map out the whole content strategy today. All right. Yeah, I completely messed up promotions for this week's training. There's not going to be too many people coming in live. It's going to be chill. Uh... Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let's see, let me just do a final check here. Okay, audio seems to be working. Okay, so let me see. Camera, is it working? Looks like it's working. Let's just do a quick test if we're on sync. If not, I'm not gonna fix that anyways, but it will be interesting. Looks like we're on sync. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna wait like, oh yeah, it's a new, completely new setup. That's why like, got multiple new setups here. Like the whole, uh, had to move my computer and then uh, on the computer itself, it's uh, now we're using Restream to live on, go live on YouTube. So hello, anybody watching potentially on YouTube. It's like there's one person watching, all right? And then we're live on Facebook as well. I don't see the viewers there. But yeah, because we completely messed up promotions for this week, it's not gonna be too many people watching anyway. So if anybody is watching, you will for sure get all of your questions answered. And uh, today is going to be a bit more chill anyways, because last week we've done a, we actually already talked about how you can look at the camera, how you can uh, sell and deliver yearly content retainers. So go mainly on the kind of high level in terms of what do you need to even consider or think about when you go on the retainer model and stop selling those one-off projects and start going uh, the long-term route, working with clients over three, six, even 12 month contract. Uh, like for example, uh, Jeremy on the call here, he just recently joined our uh, beta group, which uh, again, if any of you guys haven't signed up for that yet, I should have a little pop-up here. Uh, we have some uh, crazy, uh, crazy bonuses. And uh, again, this, what you guys see here right here is just the tip of the iceberg, of course, in terms of uh, what I can show publicly. And uh, again, right there uh, under that link, uh, you can get access to a full uh, 90 minute masterclass that kind of goes a little bit more in depth in terms of all the high level steps that you need to take when it comes to, again, we our, our hook here is uh, book 30 meetings in 60 days guaranteed. If, if, if that doesn't work out for you, you literally get back your full investment. And then in that 90 minute masterclass, I kind of highlight all of the major steps that you would need to uh, take into consideration. Uh, when going at this yourself, or you can again, book a call there, uh, just sign up, the link is gone now, uh, should be in the comments as well, pushrec.com slash beta, and then you can book a call with me and we can find out if and how this might be a good fit. Cause right now, again, we're launching up some uh, beta coaching uh, group here, where again, we're going way more in depth here. And uh, again, last week uh, in our live stream, which again, what, what I was able to show you publicly, we already sh showed you all of the high level steps when it comes to selling those content retainers and, uh, getting away from those one-off projects. Uh, and this week, again, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth in terms of how do you actually plan and then create all of that content. So the title, I'm not sure if it changed here again, how to create three months of content in three days. That's quite a bold statement, but I'll show you how that's possible. And uh, we're gonna recap some of last week's training. And again, all of that is, if you're not in the Facebook group, go ahead, join the Facebook group. All those trainings that, that we have been publishing throughout this launch period here, they will all go offline soon. And that's where I'll show you in a second how you can uh, get access to that at a very, very affordable price, as well as uh, some of the kind of bonus uh, bonuses that are, uh, again, for anybody signing up for this for this launch masterclass. So even if you don't go ahead and uh, uh, want to work with me one on one or need that just yet, uh, or you don't have the budget. And again, the, don't even worry about the, the pricing. You don't even need to uh, 
again when you book that call with me don't need to worry that uh we're gonna have some high pressure scenario with like multiple thousands of dollars investment this is this call is just there to really find out that anybody that joins this group is a good fit because again we have that crazy guarantee where i'm literally going to work with you one-on-one -on -one until you get those meetings booked on your calendar or you just get back your full investment so that's why again i need to make sure that we're a good fit uh that's uh again I believe uh, we're only gonna take on clients. I'm 100% sure I can I can help out here. But again, even if you, that's not for you at all, uh, we're gonna have some crazy bonuses here. Like again, I already talked about some of those last week. I'll show you a cool worksheet uh, in a second here and you guys get access to that if you sign up for that launch masterclass there. So that's again, uh, one last time, pushrec.com slash beta for anybody that didn't sign up yet. Again, all the bonuses will go down as well as the masterclass, of course. And of course, uh, once once we're full with the group here, uh, we're gonna close that down. Make sure that anybody in this beta group is gonna get those meetings booked on their calendar and can start selling those long-term retainers. And then again, we're gonna probably launch uh, to the public, uh, probably not to the towards the end of the of the year. So I'm gonna go dark for for a bit there. So make sure to get those bonuses while they're live. Um, and again, that's how you also get access to some of the, those worksheets and uh, trainings that I'm gonna be mentioning throughout this call here today. So, uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them. Uh, I, I see all the, like we're using Restream for the first time here. I see all the comments here from, let's actually test that from Facebook and YouTube. Um, so let me, let me just check that cam and comments. There should be some comments there. Uh, let, let me just get rid of that thing. So that's working. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them there. Um, I kind of messed up promotions. We're not going to have too many people joining here uh, today. So that's going to be good for anybody that is showing up because you will for sure get your questions asked, uh, answered. So we'll just go sip some water here and then we'll jump into the content. So we got four people watching here. So let me know where are you guys calling in from. Well, calling in from where are you guys watching from, uh, whether you're on Facebook or, or YouTube, let me know in the, the comments. We'd love to, to hear that. And hope you guys had a good week so far. And let me know, are you already working with, with uh, clients? on retainer models or are you already helping them kind of produce content over the long term even if it's not a retainer per se but you're just working with them uh no jesus that's the wrong one but you're just working with them um over multiple months so are you already helping your clients do that or is it mainly one-off projects that you're selling let me know in the comments i'm really interested to see where you guys are kind of at and then we can cover that while going through so i know jeremy's watching here he just signed his first uh retainer deal so that's exciting he just joined the beta group a couple of weeks ago we haven't really even launched into the full trainings yet so that's amazing cool all right so let me open up the whiteboard of justice here all right the white balance is a bit off sorry if i look pale well i am pale like a ghost. Okay, so where is the training content? Q4. Okay, so last week we already talked about, and all of those trainings are already live in the uh, in the membership bootcamp section. So if you joined the, the bootcamp or the beta group, you already have access to all the replays as well as the uh, worksheet that I mentioned and showed in uh, last week's training. And again, we're gonna be using that in today's training as well again. So again, if you haven't signed up for the pushrake.com slash beta, make sure to do, to do that. And then you should receive an email showing you how you can get access to this worksheet for free. So that is that. So we're gonna be, let me just dive through some of this here. So let's go to the screen. And actually, let me just show you guys where you can find the trainings. Okay, so right now, again, if you sign up for the, uh, I should probably share my screens here and uh, let me move myself there and just remove the comments for now. Uh, oops, that's not working. Jesus Christ. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting used to this new setup here. Screen, let me move myself there. Perfect. So again, this is where you can uh, get access uh, for free. Again, actually, we're going to extend this uh, period for, for one more week because some uh, people were uh, questing to to be able to pay with some other payment methods as well as we had some technical difficulties. But again, right now for the for the next week, uh, at least you will get access to the full bootcamp. You can uh, basically get access for free. Uh, 
and that's where we usually uh we're selling this for 27 dollars a month now so it's really a price that anybody can uh can afford but uh, again if you sign up through the for the beta that i uh just uh, showed you you get access to this full boot camp here you can uh, basically try it all out for free uh, again we every week you're going to be adding uh to this here again all of the live trainings from this uh launch period here will be going down again it says on youtube i think it should say as well this stream should uh will self-destruct if not i'll add that to the title and we're going to delete that uh and again this is pretty much 90 to well one to two uh, maybe even sometimes three hour long trainings like we had a three hour long sales training for example you can turn complete strangers into high play paying clients but again specifically for today uh we already um haven't done the training in the past with a very very similar topic here that not a lot of people saw because uh, um, uh, same situation as today, we kind of had some uh, some issues with uh, tagging people on Facebook and with our email service provider. But again, that's where uh, that's where today you, we're gonna even we're going through some way 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 more exciting stuff. Because over the last half year, there's been so much happening with like AI content generation and really things that are gonna completely fucking blow your mind. So again, that's where we already talked about some of this here. And last week, we already talked about how you can sell and deliver those yearly content retainers. So really on a high level. So again, these are full on uh, trainings where we go through all of the high level concepts that you need to know when it comes to, instead of selling these, should have maybe cleaned this up a little bit before the stream. Uh, let me just freaking move that over. So instead of selling these one-off projects where you're basically just uh, praying to God that it's going to work out, right? And in most cases, client, clients are going to come to you. They are going to ask for, again, some form of promotional content. But again, if they don't have any, like, I know the drill. Like, you produce that video for the client, it ends up dying on social media. And again, if, you, if they don't have any, any like, way to really pull new people into their audience, which in most cases, your clients are going to have a couple thousand likes on Facebook, a couple of thousand followers on Instagram. And even if they have multiple tens of thousands, if they don't continuously have a system to get new leads into the door, new eyeballs in this case, then uh, again, that strategy is going to dry out eventually, uh, or it's just not going to work uh, from the get go. Because again, if you compare that to, to a system where you help your clients produce multiple types of content, you could take, again, one piece of uh, one video that you produce. And uh, again, if maybe you're working with a real estate agent, it might be like 10 tips uh, for first time home buyers, right? So these are the minute mark sections here. So it's again, 10 tips. And then you could turn each of these into some micro content, right? So each of these could be, uh, again, if it's maybe a 10 minute long video, it could be one minute long, um, one minute long uh, snippets of this content. Um, Literally, if you if you subscribe to me on YouTube, just the other day I rec I took a little snippet from a live stream and uploaded that to YouTube. Right, that's micro content. And uh, again, if you have a two hour long live stream, then of course you're gonna have a shit ton of content to choose from. But uh, again, probably most most of your clients are not gonna produce live streams. And again, you don't need to just think about uh, think in this in terms of that this is the only way that you can help your clients. Like I had a, a, a guy on the other uh, call the other week who said like, hey, I can't do this if I'm doing explainer videos, right? But no, you don't need to necessarily turn this content that's existing into micro content. You could just create some very, very basic uh, advertisements. So ad library, you can check out, by the way, what types of ads people are running. If you go to the Facebook ad library, that's just Facebook ad library. And then you can type in a brand name, like for example, Casper like to give the big guys because they're running a shit ton of variations and you really see that it doesn't take too much to create some like quote unquote micro content or different variations of content where again you can tailor that specifically to some sub audiences right if people are buying vegan products for example because of different reasons like i'm plant-based myself i mainly do it because i want to stay healthy right uh there's other people who do it because they want to save the animals other people who do it because they uh, they want to save the environment or uh, God knows what there's different reasons or motivations that uh, again would even get somebody to stop scrolling if you don't give a shit about this brand why would you even stop stop scrolling right so if you have some again quick how-to teaser snippets or just some general like thumb stopping uh, way you get people to stop scrolling like this could be some memes as well uh, like um, like we uh, actually for for here um Jeremy's on the call here. He's uh, he just signed a, a retainer deal with a trucking company. Uh, not trucking company. They're selling truck scales. And uh, again, like we could literally use some 
memes at the top of the funnel here where any trucker would stop scrolling right so like that's some that's some very very easy like low quality low effort type of content that you could produce right or you could go the micro content route and go more with more planning really actually do two to three days of shooting and come home with literally three months of content right i'm not joking when i when i say this here so um uh, again, like just think about this. If this was a 10 minute long video, 10 tips to consider when buying your first property or um, 10 reasons why you need Invisalign. Like last week, I gave some examples like, oh, just check out yesterday's YouTube video. That's gonna show you more with that dentist example. That's always a good one. Um, but again, that, that's already 10 pieces of content right here. Now with those content pieces that are standalone videos that we posted here, we could now literally, okay, that should be a play button there. Uh, don't mind my drawing here. Uh, that's again, 10 micro content pieces. Now we can create stories or short promotional like snippets, maybe just taking a screenshot or a GIF or GIF of that video and create even more kind of story posts, right? So this, uh, let's, let's draw this, uh, kind of tall format, right? This could be, it could be a story, right? Just write an S or like an I G for Instagram. Wow. Okay. I should really work on my drawing here. Uh, but again, that's now Instagram stories for each of these again, right? So we have 10. Right, so this is 10 little videos and each of those 10 videos could have another Instagram story or just another promotional post uh, to drive more traffic to that micro content piece, right? So you literally produced or shot or filmed or even the client these days, like if they have an iPhone, whatever, or one of the latest generation phones, like literally within the last three years, all of those are going to do if they have some good audio set up as well. Audio is usually most, more important. But in that case, you wouldn't even necessarily need to film this. And one video here could turn into 10, 20 content pieces. You could you could even, I, I would argue, you could even create more out of one, one uh, content piece if you really go all the way crazy. And again, in this training here, I'm going to show you literally the step-by-step -step process when it comes to actually how do you come up with these ideas? How do you plan it out? And then I'll show you some some little hacks or high level things when it comes to the execution. But most of that we're gonna uh, gonna have to reserve for now for the private beta group. Cause uh, again, there's some some cutting edge stuff that I, I just can't share with, with everybody. We're gonna go on through the high level shit though. I, I'll show you how you can literally, once you have that video, use AI tools to help you create all of the, again, each of these videos or, or posts is gonna need some text to go along with it as well, right? If you post something on Instagram, on Facebook, or even on YouTube, it's gonna have a description. There's always that text needed and there's like AI tools you can use for that. Then when it comes to the reformatting itself, uh, like creating these micro content pieces, there's um, there's actual uh, actual tools that that can help you create those snippets as well, or even literally. Uh, I'm gonna show you some insane shit. I'll show you in a second. So that video I I, I uploaded yesterday, I didn't even plan on uploading that to YouTube. It just happened because I'm using a new software and it made it so easy to cut that video. So uh, yeah, that's that's the high level of what we're gonna be talking about today. And again, last week we talked about how do you make that transition from you've only been selling one off work or you never even considered selling these long-term retainers before, then you need to check out that training. Again, today I'm gonna to recap some of that. We're gonna fly through. Uh, it's gonna be probably too fast for a lot of you watching if you haven't watched that training. So again, make sure to catch that replay. Uh, and again, you need to, uh, if you haven't signed up already, you need to sign up to uh, pushrec.com slash beta. That's, you're gonna get an email that shows you how you can get access to, uh, to all the replays and that worksheet that we're gonna be going through today for free. So yeah, make sure to sign up there if you haven't already and uh, I'm gonna jump into the high level workflow now. <sighs> okay. All right, any any questions? Fame, hello fame. Wow, it's been a while, man. Back in the GTA editing days. Yeah, for, for a lot of you people who might not know, like I start with editing Call of Duty videos and then other gaming videos for a lot of big gaming channels. Like, uh, yeah, pro probably most of you guys don't know. Hey, fame, hope you're doing well. Cool, so uh, let's get back into the thing. Um, all right, so again, it's it doesn't take much to create some ads or to create some content variations. Like literally, like, again, you can use uh, Canva, just uh, recently uh, has a video tool, like I'm, I'm jumping ahead here. Uh, but uh, literally my girlfriend just used this to create some promotional stuff for uh, for a burger restaurant that uh, I recently helped build a website for. So, uh, and again, that's the thing, like even if you help your clients and you produce some banger freaking photos, I would say like I, I shot that uh, the other week, um, 
well, could, could probably be, be better. But uh, again, I'm, I'm happy with the result and also the website. I, I built that as well, of course. But again, that's only half the equation. If people have a good website, how are we going to get that freaking traffic on there? We need content, right? We need a lot of promotional content. So just having a pretty website or even a pretty video uh, doesn't do shit. So again, that's where we, again, we have special offers even right here with countdowns. But if nobody sees that, then nobody's going to freaking sign up, right? So how do we get that traffic onto, onto, uh, onto your client's websites? And again, you don't need to become their marketing uh, person like again this is where you could be working together with their marketing team you could outsource this to to a contractor right have a virtual assistant help, help you with some of this because again it takes a lot of work of course to to schedule all of this content out and actually post things right but this is where i'm going to show you in a, in a bit where um literally if you just start running uh running paid ads uh, you don't even need to run, uh, post that much daily content right because these paid ads you can literally set it up where like hey if uh, again, going back to the, the trucking example, we're just trying to sell truck scales here that we can literally just target people who are truckers. And uh, again, that's that's one of the basic audiences we can target and make sure our content gets seen by those people. Again, 24 seven, every single day, right? It's again, they're scrolling for Facebook, through Instagram, maybe even YouTube ads. Again, you can place these ads anywhere. And if again, you follow this process I'm sharing with you here today, then it's no guessing game. You're gonna help your clients get results. And again, you don't need to be the one actually posting. Again, you could, you, your client's marketing team, you can work together with them if they have one. If not, then great. You can help your client all the shit on because if they just post the content on social media, it's just going to freaking die off if you don't help them with any of the distribution. And uh, that's, again, story of my life. Like, again, I've got my bachelor's degree in digital filmmaking and visual effects. And no matter like how, like, again, I have learned this or uh, learned this the hard way, like uh, where we produced commercials for crazy, for, for like high budgets. And then again, the client just, ends up uh ends up posting the video everybody's happy with it like we love the video it looks good but then crickets right it's just gonna get sucked down to the algorithms but yeah if you follow this process here which i'm gonna lay out with you uh for you here in a second now uh that's gonna help you again map out that content for all of these stages of the funnel because there's people who don't give a shit about your client who who have never heard of this brand before then again people who might already start to consider to purchase their products or check out what they have to offer and again, then there's the people who are already to, ready to buy and we just need to show them an offer. And this is where most of your clients, because again, you don't know what you don't know. And uh, like most clients, they come to you, they, they, they think they want the video. They think they need a video. What they actually need is more traffic, sales, awareness in 99% of the cases. In some other cases, it might be internal team productivity. Uh, like one of my clients, he, he, uh, he closed like a uh 40 000 plus dollar training video deal because uh again they had to, they couldn't fly in staff because of covid and then had to um had to of course uh make up for that with training videos so now instead of paying for all those flights and having to do that over and over again they produced this batch of training videos once was a shit ton of work but now they can use that over the next two three years however long the product is going to be sold and used so uh again that's a slightly different use case but in most 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 scenarios People want to, uh, your clients are going to want to get more people, more eyeballs and more sales, right? Or anything in between. That's, that's, that's your job, right? You as a video producer, you are usually producing marketing material. So let's show you how you can do that here in a second. So yeah, let me know guys, any, anybody watching any questions uh, we got, let me know, drop those in the chat and go through that. And while we're going through, uh, Okay. Oh, it looks like there's a delay on Zoom. Okay. Yeah, that's hope, hope that's good for for the replay though on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Well, YouTube the, the replay is going to go down, and Facebook it's going to go down after the launch. So yeah, again, even if your clients have pretty websites or you sold a website before, like again, that's the thing as well. Like I've sold websites. I've sold like pretty much any creative service I've sold in the past. And then I can tell you in 99.9% in .9 of the cases, the client wants more traffic, sales, awareness, reach. Um, whatever that may be in, uh, in in marketing lingo or how you want to call it, right? Again, I've sold websites and then uh, the client loves it. I love it. And then three months later, they call me and they're like, hey, how come we're not getting more sales? I'm like, hey, no shit, Sherlock. We should have done the search engine optimization, right? So uh, again, if you, that's all of the uh, details you don't need to worry about. Again, you don't, you're not selling websites here. Just want to show you that it doesn't take too much to help your clients get results and, uh, Cut out pretty much all of your competition as well because you're not just working with your clients on a one-off basis and helping them actually get the results that they want which 
again, it's probably going to take more than just one single video that they post on Facebook and boom, they're sold out and uh, life's good for the rest of their life, right? And uh, they're swimming in sales. So that's probably not going to happen. Cool. So let's go through the steps here. So again, we've covered this in extensive detail uh, when it comes to the high level of the steps you need to take. And again, that's where uh, if you haven't checked out the masterclass, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Uh, or if you if you're really serious about your business, then why you haven't booked that call? Because again, we're literally gonna we're guaranteeing you 30 plus meetings booked on your calendar within 60 days. And uh, again, in that masterclass, you then also get the uh, access to all the training replays here, the worksheet I'll show you in a second, uh, as well as all the high level systems and steps that you need to take to uh, to even be able to sell these content retainers. So today we're going to drill one level down and we'll talk about how you can actually make this happen. So last week was kind of the high level overview, uh, as well as the steps, which we're going to now recap real quick. And uh, from there on, I'm going to we're going to dive into the worksheet and set this all up. And uh, yeah, if you uh, let, let me switch the, the battery here. If you are already working with any clients, let me know what types of clients you're working with. And we can potentially map out some ideas for that. So uh, let me just uh, be right back switching batteries. That's what you get when you use a Sony for streaming. Okay, should be should be running. There we go. Okay, so let me just clean this up here. I always mess things up. So all of these steps here, uh, again, are pretty much laid out step by step. <laughs> As steps should be right. Um, well, I'm horrible with with these jokes. So that's where uh, you're going to get access to a complete worksheet here that's going to help you map out that full on content strategy. So actually, let me just uh, find that distribution strategy. There we go. So all of these steps here uh, are going to be laid out for you uh, one by one, where at the end, you're going to basically have a recap page that you can then work off of present to the clients. And literally this process alone, you can just sell to your clients. You could literally use this as a downsell if let's say they um, they didn't uh, didn't sign up. And again, now we're talking high level concepts again. Make sure to watch last week's training if you want to learn how to sell these actual uh, retainers and how to really position your offer. Um, but one quick tip here, which I didn't really give last week. Um, again, you're going to have your form of value ladder of what, what you're selling. And uh, at the very high end, again, that might be your retainer model. It's, I don't know, three to 5K per month. But if somebody doesn't buy that just yet, then you can always downsell them, right? Maybe on, um, maybe just on a uh, one-off package, right? So uh, content package, right? That might be like a, a 7K uh, one-off, right? And then if they, if they still don't buy that, that again, you could just sell them the content strategy and uh literally just this process which i'm sharing with you today here if you start to get good at this or really crack the code for let's say you're working with one uh specific type of niche gyms or god knows what then again after you crack the code and you know hey this types of content is gonna get them new leads into the door or whatever the objective is for this type of client and again we're not going to talk about those high level concepts in terms of how you can actually position your offers and uh get people from that first contact until they actually buy your, your offer and how you can literally position your offer and make sure that you really land that sweet spot where you're able to um, attract and convert cold heart strangers here. Uh, but again, um, once you get good at just the strategy part, you can literally just sell that for um, anywhere between 500 to to $1,000. Literally just this strategy process, because uh, again, then they can literally take this if they have an internal uh, production team or literally a lot of this. If somebody has a marketing team like you, you'd be scared or surprised as to how little video knowledge you need these days to use some of these tools to create some content that again gets results, which again, 
this type, this, these types of videos, like, how is it even a video? It's literally just this swipe up thing that's animated here. And this could be literally just templates that their marketing team could create. So just this strategy alone is immensely valuable. So that's always the potential of getting your foot into the door. You could, uh, you could uh, offer just this here or uh, offer them to give them the money back if they're not happy. That's another like kind of way to make this no brainer offer to get your foot in the door. We're like, hey, we'll map you out the full content strategy. And if you don't think this will outperform your current strategy, you get back your full investment. Or again, now, now we're talking about all of that again. I, I want to get into the actual steps here, but uh, I want to make sure that anybody that might be watching now already gets some gems when it comes to selling these models because uh, again not everybody's going to buy that retainer but you can always downsell them if they don't buy this and there's multiple downsell strategies this is less than the tip of the iceberg so again if you haven't signed up for the uh for the boot camp yet which we, we have a shit ton of uh uh trainings in there already there's more getting added like we just added two uh two new trainings and just the sales training alone here is gonna uh make a complete difference on uh on your entire journey as a video video videographer right because uh, most 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 filmmakers they are they're stuck relying on networking word of mouth referrals and literally just people coming to them where you have absolutely no control and if you go out there to the cold heart market who don't give a shit about who you are who don't know you trust you or like you it's a whole different ball game so again just want to make sure you get some potential ideas here but you do check out that training if you haven't done so already pushback.com slash beta gonna get access for free um, but yeah, this process here, again, this is literally the difference between you being that commodity and just selling, selling, uh, one off videos and potentially making two to $5,000 with one video project or signing that client on, uh, Jeremy, what did you, uh, if you still hear me, what did you agree on with the, uh, retainer price for, for the trucking company? Yes, I can. Dang, yeah, so that that could be the difference, right? So, uh, so, right, so that's literally just repositioning your your offer. And uh, again, with with Jeremy, we've just been working for a couple of weeks, and we haven't really even launched into the full uh, group training for this beta group yet. So, literally, just that one mindset shift in terms of, hey, I'm helping the client over the long term, and really helping the client also see and get that that is going to make such a huge difference. Like, it could be a ten x increase. Like, I don't want to make these crazy claims. But uh, like that's um, like that's not typically how I do my marketing here. Uh, also, we're not doing like live fake webinars here, like uh, some of the other people you might have seen before. It's literally just content. So, uh, but yeah, that is literally you could be making ten x the your income. Um, and again, with with Jeremy here, we're now uh, like one step after the other. Before again, you need to wor before you worry about the the delivery part. I always tell my clients um, or any in any live training, pretty much. You need to start with the success chain here. And again, I don't want to bore people who uh, have watched these trainings in the past, but this is literally every coaching call, every live training is always the same. You need to figure out who is your target, what kind of problems do they have? And from there, once you really understand what it is that you can actually help them with, that's going to help you define your messaging, build out your outreach systems to really get those leads into the door. And before you even worry about service delivery, you need to have all of these in place, right? You need to know who am I helping and how, what am I helping them with? How am I going to communicate with that with them? And how am I going to get that message in front of these people? And how am I going to get those once they respond, get them from stranger to paying clients, right? And then once they bought, this is what we're going to be talking about today. So all of these past things here, that's what we talked about in the uh, last two weeks trainings. Um, so make sure to, to catch those. And then uh, again, I, I, I literally forced Jeremy here on the call to literally just worry about selling this deal before even worrying about the service delivery, which I'm going to help him completely map out now. Pretty much with this process I'm showing you today here, I'm going to go a little bit deeper, of course, because uh, I can't show everything to the public here while doing this launch. Um, but yeah, again, before you even worry about this at all, uh, you need to have all of these in place here. And uh, again, it might be a little bit stressful uh, if you don't know exactly what you're selling. So again, of course, uh, of course, you need to be educated on what it is that you're helping them with. But if you, again, if you join our, our beta program here with the process we have, it's literally just step by step 
following the journey in the game. I'm there to help anybody get to do that as well, of course. Um, but again, with you guys uh, watching this, probably most of you guys are going to have no clue who are you even helping, what you can help them with, how are you reaching them, and what are you going to even be saying? Like, again, nobody cares how many years of combined experience you have or what crazy 4K raw equipment you've got. Like, nobody freaking gives a shit. Uh, again, a dentist wants more patients. He doesn't want teeth whitening patients, though. He might want to get Invisalign patients. So your message might be like, again, I literally, mentioned that in yesterday's uh, video and last week's training uh literally again for every every niche there's a message that that you can use to to get inside their their minds the conversation that's going on in their mind as they wake up in the morning thinking shit i need to solve this problem then your email comes in or your message your whatever system you use to get your message in front of them it could be a freaking smoke signal if that works so as long as the the client the target understands your message then again you're going to get those those meetings and then all you got to do is really present your offer to them in the right way and uh get that lead in the get that lead sold right and then once you sold the deal now you can worry about the, the delivery part but i see most creatives like literally freak out about the service delivery and just uh learn the, the worst part is they only learn the, the um video production aspect and the non no marketing things whatsoever. That's where, of course, if you're selling marketing uh, retainers, you want to be somewhat educated. That's what uh, the, the past two trainings and today is going to be for. Um, but again, don't even worry about this. Don't watch all of these uh, crazy lens reviews and all of this, uh, again, lighting tutorials if you, if you don't even uh, have leads that are in the door, right? You're going to, that's not a business, that's a hobby. So cool. Let's talk about the process then, and we're going to then walk through those steps here. So first up, again, before you do anything, you need to work, figure out with your clients um, who is even going to buy this product, who would even watch this video, like who is their audience, who is their target customer for every every product has a uh, or every product or every service has a has a target audience, right? So you need to get in there and find out, hey, just do some basic research, like what are their professions, their interests, what are some of the books they read, some of the magazines that they read, general desires, triggers or avoidances, tone of voice or language that they may use. Because again, if you're producing uh, content for, uh, like again, we're, we're now with uh, Jeremy going to be producing content for truckers, we, we're going to speak quite casual or have casual types of script and uh, copywriting, the text that we're going to use, right? We're not going to be all formal and professional like if we were, if our audience was, uh, I don't know, high level lawyers or uh, uh, God knows what, right? Uh, dentists, right? So with a dentist, uh, you, you're going to have, of course, a more professional tone of voice. And this is not you speaking to them. Uh, this is if you were producing content for dentists, uh, targeting dentists, not sure why, why that would be the case. Uh, but again, we want to make sure we speak their language, of course. Um, and again, figure out what in general gets these people uh, interested. So let's see. Here's the process. So before we do anything, again, we need to find out who are these people we want to get into our funnel here. Let me just expand that a little bit so you guys see better. Uh, there we go. And again, there's these different stages of the funnel. You could call it cold, warm, hot, or awareness, consideration, purchase, whatever the frick you want to call it. Uh, the people who don't know you, like you, or trust you, who don't give a shit, the people who somewhat know, like, and trust you, and the people who know, like, and trust you, or your client already, and are pretty much ready to, to become that customer. And uh, the golden rule is you should be spending 20% of your content marketing actually creating the content and 80% of the time should be spent promoting it or creating these different variations and micro content pieces, right? Where again, if you have just one shoot and you publish one video, that's not gonna, gonna do as much as like a full campaign that you map out for your clients, right? And that's of course, most of the bulk work, but pretty much 99% of creators just focus on the content, they hand it over to the client and they, they, they wait and pray and hope that it's gonna work out. But, uh, yeah, that's the whole overall concept and the, the golden rule of, of, of uh, marketing here. And to then get that content out there, you need to, of course, figure out what kind of channels are we going to be even uh, using here. But again, before we even get there, so this is some of the high level information that we already talked about here. Uh, you're going to get access to this worksheet here again if you sign up for the, um, for the uh, masterclass there. And th that's where you can just uh, read through this here again. We're going to skip through that, though, and just going to go through this process now where, again, before we do anything, we need to figure out who even are these people? Where the frick do they hang out? What type of content uh, would they be interested in? Right? What problems do they have that are going on through their mind? Because, uh, again, let's say um, you're in the market for um, like I'm, I'm looking at uh, at uh, 
at solar batteries right now, right? And I just the other day found out that uh, that there's like a difference between solar batteries. Like I'm very at the very top of the funnel, right? That there's very specific problems where if you now I see a piece of content that uh, shows me like, hey, this is the best L E L O P. Like there was an acronym for that, the best that type of battery. I'm gonna check that out, right? That's a problem I'm trying to figure out in my mind right now. I'm gonna research a little bit later. So <laughs> that's where every audience that's that's in the market for for your clients products or services has specific problems that they are trying to solve like i, I always always mention this i don't want to bore you guys to death right but whenever people buy anything it's because they want to get away from their pains or their current situation and they want to get towards their desired situation or their desires right and again that's that's why they buy anything if they like girl the girls these days they buy the iphone so they can finally look as pretty and get those likes on instagram and feel accepted by their friends right those are the like again right now they they feel not as pretty like again that's that sounds brutal but that's probably that's most likely what is going on for 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 girls buying some of these iphones these days so i think about you buying a uh your your uh your camera right hey you see all of these um uh Filmmakers out there, they have those crazy lenses, lenses where you can do the shallow depth of field, right? That's where you can, hey, right now I'm in this situation, I only have this shitty lens and I want to get to this situation where I have that, that good lens and I can finally have cinematic videos and uh, people are going to respect me more and uh, so, like whatever the frick that is, it's because you want to get away from where you're at right now and you want to get towards where you want to be. Again, people do always do anything because they want to get away from pain and they want to get towards their desires. And your job as a business owner, um, when you're selling them your services and also when you're now helping them with their marketing. So first of all, let's talk about selling the services. You need to figure out what are these hoops that they need to jump over, right? So again, they need to, uh, uh, again, map out the strategy. Then you need to create that content. You need to distribute that content. You need to... Uh, measure and analyze what's going on and then optimize the content. And that might be everything that they need to, again, with right now, um, let's say that that trucking company that uh, Jeremy is helping, like uh, I think they're getting like 20 sales a week, but they could be getting 40 sales a week, right? So right now it's 20 sales a week and they could be getting to 40 sales a week. That's again, for their current situation versus the desired situation. And to get there, they're gonna need all of this. We can't just, just produce the video here and then just upload it on social media if we uh, don't have that strategy in place or if we're not measuring or analyzing what we're doing, right? That's like throwing that spaghetti at the wall and not even looking which one sticks, right? That's that's stupid. So uh, again, that's the, the first um, way of looking at this when you are selling your services. But the second way of looking at this is uh, now we sold the deal, we, we got the, uh, the trucking company um, uh, on board. So now we're going to help them out here. Uh, get the get the truck scales in front of more customers. So that's where uh, these truckers, they also have a current situation and they also have a desired situation, right? And that's of course, so there's roadblocks there. There's uh, no pun intended. There's roadblocks there and uh, problems that they're facing. So if we can help them bridge those problems or target those problems uh, through our content, then they're going to be more buyer capable, right? So again, this is basic human psychology 101, uh, like why people do anything. They want to get away from where they're at towards where they want to go. And uh, that's why people buy anything. So that's why we want to find this out, right? So again, this is where we can now start to collect uh, data off of your uh, website, email subscribers, followers on social media. And let me just actually make that a little bit larger. Just so you guys see like you got your Instagram analytics, Facebook analytics, um, all that fun stuff. Let me just expand that a little bit. There we go. And uh, that's where you get a bunch of this data already. Like, of course, you're not going to get into their problems, desires and all of that. I'm going to, again, this is where inside this worksheet here, there's some tools that you can use for uh, doing some market research, right? There's a market research call script that you can use even. Uh, then, uh, literally to uh, some other tools like answer the public where you can just uh, type in your niche and it's going to show you all the questions people have around this topic right so um i don't know it's rocking right let's type that in and then there's all like again if you don't want to break your head here then uh you could uh, look at the data section here and that's going to compile this but it shows you basically all of these uh questions here like which what where who when why how and i should have probably put in a bit more specific like one to two keywords works best here and again then it shows you all the, the questions right so um 
how trucking companies make money, uh, how to become an owner operator. So again, this is not the best keyword if we're selling truck scales here. Um, but again, this might also be, um, let's say, one of my other clients, he's working with uh, supplement companies, right? So uh, vegan supplements, right? So we can look at all the questions people have around this uh, topic. Oh, it's still loading here. We're going to have to refresh in a second. Mm. But this is just one of the tools. And then, of course, um, you could look at um, your Facebook, uh, your client's Facebook insights, their Google Analytics, right? I think I got that open somewhere here. So we got some people on our website right now. And uh, then let me check here. You could see, well, this is the new Google uh, dashboard. So they have been I'm used to the old one. Let's just go there. Uh, that's where you can check out. Your, oh, I, I just saw it, the demographics. Uh, but you, you see uh, a bunch of data, like uh, what interests do they have, right? Um, and a whole bunch of different things. So in my case, like that's not too interesting here but again you can you can go look at different places you pull different uh uh reports through google uh facebook um like you've got some this is actually the facebook group here uh but you know the drill like if you ever run a facebook page you can you have your insights section it shows you what kind of age range are these people at what other pages do they like and uh, all of that interesting information and uh then you could also you can use these uh, tools like answer the public, check out some of these questions. And this is already content ideas right here. We're already jumping ahead here. Like this is not a completely linear process. I've tried to map it out in a step-by-step -step way here. Um, but at every step of the way here, we are adding to the next one. It's all connected, right? So whatever you pull here, I'll consider downloading this as a CSV file as well. And then just get an overall idea of what are the general topics and problems people have. Well, it looks like that, but battery didn't last too long there. Um, I'll just shut that off for now. But yeah, what are the general high level problems that, that people might have? And that's going to give you some overall ideas in terms of uh, the audience. Well, um, let's jump here. Uh, what again, what the age range are they at? What, what problems do they have? What interests them? What doesn't interest them? What is their kind of tone of voice that they're using? You could again look at uh, some different markets like uh, vegan supplements a tool called a uh, bus zumo let me just show you the website here bus zumo looks like it doesn't have the name here um, and that shows you for any any uh search that you that you input or different um blogs that might be uh relevant in this market it shows you the top trending content how much has been shared on facebook and then you know like hey this type of stuff is uh uh, like algae supplements. Okay, that's definitely something if your client is selling vegan supplements, let's do algae stuff, right? That, that seems to be trending. You could even check uh, Google Trends, for example, right? Just look at different um, different ideas, how things are, are trending, right? So uh, algae supplements, right? So I'm just showing you some ways that you can research markets here, right? So of course, people in Germany are not going to type it in English, right? And then you can look at it from broader point of view and looks like that's not really doing too well right but uh again that's where you can get some data points as well in terms of just search terms how pe many people are searching for it then again get the overall main ideas here right so vegan without supplements uh what ve what supplements do vegans have to take that's some good topic ideas here so uh yeah, so if you're like working with a vegan supplement brand, so general topic idea or problem with it, but that they might have is uh, uh, again getting all the nutrients that they need, right? If you're eating vegan, you're gonna need vitamin B12, right? So I know that because I I eat plant based most of the time. So yeah, but that might be a problem that the that the target audience might have. And uh, again, after we Jesus, where are we here? After we then mapped out their uh, audience which I'll show you in a second, where you can add those details, you can then look at, hey, what has worked in the past and what has not worked when trying to attract these types of people. And then we can map out where are we going to even be posting the, the, uh, this content here. And that's how this uh, works together here. Actually, I just see that my camera is still on there, which, uh, well, it's on, but not on. Get what I mean? So at that point and only uh, only at that point, we can look at, hey, where even are we going to be posting? Because again, depending on where these people hang out, depending on the age ranges, or again, if we're trying to reach truckers here, uh, I'm not sure if, again, TikTok is gonna be the right audience. Probably they're gonna be on Facebook, that's kind of a older demographic, and probably a lot on Instagram as well, right? And again, 
we know that after our research, you just look at your client's data, look at where's most of the traffic coming from. And you can look at all of that through Google Analytics and just some basic searches as well as this workflow here is going to show you how that works. But we're going to uh, scroll past that now. And this is where at this point you should have all of your data here, right? So um, this was for a, I think a vegan uh, shampoo or some, some vegan product here. And there's these different personas, right? Like me, the health nerd, but then there's also the sustainability and animal uh, rights person. And these are different types of people that we want to attract to your client's business and that we can create different types of content for, right? We can uh, create content for the, um, and again, we didn't even fill all of this out here, uh, but this is where uh, where you can, again, just fill out what you, what you learned here, right? What are the interests? Who are the people that they are following, right? So the sustainable and animal rights person might be following people like, uh, Greta Thunberg or, or Peter, however you want to pronounce that. And uh, then we can literally target the content that we create for these types of people. We can literally run targeted advertisements to people that like these Facebook pages or that go to specific events, right? So again, the, the more targeted uh, it is, the, the better it's going to work. The more it's going inside their minds, speaking to those exact pains and desires that, 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 that are going on, where they want to get away from or towards then again, the, the more likely it is that they're going to watch that advertisement, watch that video or click on that link or buy that product. We need to, again, figure out who, before we do anything, even with your business, we need to figure out, again, it's always the same thing with content. It's a bit more, some more steps here and it's not uh, just this straightforward, but I got these steps mapped out, of course, but no matter what we do, we need to figure out the target first, right? Who even is going to buy this or <laughs> who are we doing this for? So. That's what you then input all into here. So uh, let me know if anybody watching here has any questions. Uh, Jeremy, we're going to, of course, walk through this here together and already done th some of that here. But uh, again, most of this data here, you're going to get through the analytics and just speaking with your client directly, right? So that is that. Oh, yeah, one more tool that might be useful here. Again, this was answer the public and all of those are linked in the worksheet anyway. So you can get the uh, get access there. And literally all of this is like unlimited content ideas already here. Um, so there's already your ideas. Um, but yeah, that is, um, that is the audience. So now at this point we can look at, Hey, what worked in the past and what didn't work for this type of audience. Right. And, uh, uh, after that, figure out where are we going to now posting this content? And then the most fun part, mapping out the content types. And then for the rest of the call here, we're going to go through all the creation, distribution, measurement parts. So yeah, let's let's finish up the initial strategy here. And at this point, again, now we know who's that audience. So at this point, we would look at who is this content going to be, uh, what worked in the past and what didn't work in the past. So uh, let me just pull up here. So are you producing content for every stage of the funnel, right? So that's where we can ask uh, different questions. And Luckily, it's all mapped out here. So uh, if you join the beta, you're going to literally get a plug and play automation that once you have access to your client stuff, you can just pull a report and it's going to ma map all of the content into here. Um, but uh, if not, if you haven't joined the beta, then uh, of course you would need to do this manually. Uh, and again, you can sign up up here, pushrec.com slash beta, book your call with me there. Um, but yeah, that's where we can now look at, hey, if this was all the content, then of course wouldn't be as much, right? Probably there would be like 30 pieces of content minimum. And then you see like how much awareness content are they producing for the top of the funnel? How much consideration content and how much action content? At this stage here, you just put it all in, you map out, hey, this content piece was an awareness post. Uh, what type of post it was, you can even map out here. And then you have a basic um, audit view where actually you scroll down here and just open this up. Uh, actually I messed up something here. Yeah. I'm going to make sure once I share this link here with you, you get the right one here. So this is where we can now look at the content ranked by the engagement. We can look at it, uh, divided by the different stages of the funnel, and we can look at it on a calendar view. So the calendar view, which is already open, that's where we can already see some gaps. Like, Hey, maybe they posted, uh, like three times in a row, uh, this week here. And of course, all of this here would uh, would be mapped out and you would see like, hey, this is this type of content, this type of uh, post. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that here uh, in the sample data. 
but you literally see like, hey, it's been awareness post, awareness post, awareness post, and then maybe here it's an, an uh, purchase post, purchase, purchase, and now we really see some like definite room for improvement, right? You don't want to just slam uh, promotion after promotion after promotion after promotion, right? You might want to have some promotional content. There may be a meme to get some more people warmed up. There may be a considerational type content where you educate them about why they would even need this truck scale or why, um, uh, why, uh, organic chlorella supplements are better than non-organic or whatever, right? We don't want to just hammer them with the promotions and sales. So you can literally just see this here once you pull that report. And again, if you uh, join the beta there, you, you literally get a plug and play automation that's going to just pull that report for you. Uh, and otherwise, you can also look at it by the um, engagement, right? So we basically add up the engagement for these types of posts, and it's going to be just ranked with the most engaging content at the top and the least engaging content at the bottom. And then we can already see some patterns there, like, hey, this type of content for this buyer persona, maybe it was like, a, I don't know, like a coupon or something, or maybe like, let's say this one was like a, a giveaway. Do we have a giveaway here? There should be giveaway. Uh, oh, well, contest. There we go. So maybe this was like a contest post and then we see like hey this got a shit ton of engagement so maybe let's do more contest posts right and uh yeah that's why at this point here now that we look at the content and what's working and not working then we can map out okay where are we going to be posting this based off what worked in the past right if we've doing been doing some instagram um instagram contests that have took off let's do more instagram contests right we're like why the frick what we what we post on tiktok then right <laughs> or uh uh, again, depending on what worked in the past and what didn't work, we can make those adjustments. That's the idea here. So yeah, that's the content audit, right? So you just pull that report, you go through the uh, the process here, and you're going to have those gaps, right? So maybe, hey, they only have one awareness content piece. And uh, again, this is just sample data for your client that would be maybe like 10 here, 15 here, and then 30 here, right? Because most clients, they're always like trying to promote, promote, promote. And then you literally see the, the gaps here or where there's the most content and the least content. And uh, that's just different ways of looking at this database here with the uh, report that you pulled. And uh, at that point, you can then answer these questions, which are very basic. Once you have this data here, you just uh, literally just answer them. Like, hey, are we producing enough content for the awareness stage, enough for the consideration stage, right? And then you just say like, hey, this is good for the consideration stage, it's bad. And maybe for the action stage, it's ugly. We should do more of that. And then the goals would be, of course, hey, for the awareness stage, are we getting enough reach, shares, and engagement? Because at the top of the funnel, where's the funnel? We always have a funnel somewhere. No, I, oh, there we go. At the top of the funnel, of course, we want to get new people into the door, right? So we're looking at how many new people are we getting here? Reach, awareness, engagement. So those would be uh, numbers we're looking at here. And again, all of those are in the report, actually. And you can just select it here. And then this is what you can then present to your client as well. So you can pull in your notes here. And again, anything that we fill out here is going to be mapped out in the strategy recap page here. So literally you have your full audit right here with your notes and then you can present that to the client or work on that for the next month until you maybe do another audit and see what's been working well at that month. So uh, that is the strategy audit, right? So are we getting enough uh, people in at the top of the funnel? At the middle of the funnel, are we getting enough traffic and leads, right? So right here, we want to educate people on the actual benefits of our products and get them maybe to start to check out our website and actually check out our offers, right? So maybe they sign up for a giveaway here or they sign uh, they sign up for a um, free trial or something, right? This is where we want to um, look at how many traffic, how much traffic clicks on the website or offers, whatever that may be, whatever the objective of the content is that you're producing, right? Maybe you're trying to get them to message your client on, on Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, right? <laughs> like whatever that traffic is in your case, right? That is what we're looking at here. Are we getting that traffic or leads, which are people that are interested in? And that's the main job of the middle of the funnel here. And then we just look at, hey, in most cases, this is bad for the clients. And then we're like, hey, uh, we should do more, uh, more free or entry offers, right? So get more people to try out or maybe more educational content, potentially. Um, and yeah, then at the bottom of the funnel, of course, hey, are we getting conversions, sales? Are people actually taking action, right? So, hey, we want them to 
do something. That's of course the bottom of the funnel, right? So this is when we, we have some actual promotional content, maybe some uh, giveaway of a product for, for reviews or like, uh, testimonials that we're, uh, that we're targeting to people, lit literally just showing like, hey, this is this person who bought the product that you just looked at. And this is another thing where like most, most filmmakers don't even know this, right? Again, your clients have, has a website, right? Uh, website. And then pretty much uh, out of 99 or let's say 100 people that come into this website, probably 95 of them are going to leave again without buying something or without taking action on whatever that is, right? Booking that call, scheduling that free sign up or whatever the frick it is that your client actually wants to achieve here, which again is your job to help them with. Then again, out of those 100, probably 95 are not going to do anything. And now you can put them if your client has a little piece of code, which it takes like 30 seconds to set up. You just copy and paste it onto your client's website. It's an invisible piece of tracking code from Facebook. And now you can start running retargeting ads to these people here. And this could be literally just a testimonial, right? Uh, or review. Uh, and literally just that might be enough to, to get some of these people back to the website and actually check out the product and buy it or schedule that consultation or whatever the objective is, right? So this is called retargeting. And this is so easy to set up. You can, again, literally, you can just set, tell, tell uh, Facebook like, hey, anybody that visited this page here, show them these ads here. Or there might be sub pages on your client's website, right? Maybe he, ha he has uh, product A and product B. And maybe a certain percentage of the people click on product A and then they leave again. And now you can literally just retarget them and show them product A again. Right. So this is uh, like dynamic retargeting where depending on what sites they visited, like this was like a slash, like their dona domain, like pushrec.com or like website.com slash whatever. And then you can basically tell Facebook, hey, anybody that visited this domain string here, bring them back to this site here and just show them an ad piece of content. And uh, yeah, that's what we want to do at the bottom of the funnel. Right. And that's where probably there's going to be some not too good stuff as well, right? So like, hey, uh, no retargeting ads potentially, right? That's probably for most of your clients gonna be the case. And that, that alone is such a value add that you can bring to your clients. Um, and just again, th that's where if you need help setting this one, this stuff up step by step by step, which is again, like th that's where we have like full on paid training material, of course, with uh, and then with the beta uh, group, I'm gonna walk through this year step by step as well. Uh, where no matter what clients you land, we're of course going to audit that together. Because uh, the first time you're doing this, it might seem like a lot for somebody like, like, like me who's done this a shit ton of work with clients or one-on-one, uh, -on -one, helping them do this kind of stuff. It's literally, we just look at the websites and their current marketing and uh, we're going to have all of this filled out and have more than enough to work on for the next month, even if we wouldn't even uh, help them produce all of that content. So yeah, that's the audit, right? So really getting in there and figuring out like what is going on, what is working, what is not working. Um, where are we here? There we are. And uh, based off that, we can then look at, hey, depending on the audience that we want to reach out to and what worked and what didn't work in the past, now we can look at, hey, these are the channels uh, that we're going to be distributing your content on, right? Because, Jesus, because if uh, uh, like TikTok was taken off for this, uh, for this client here, and uh, their age range is maybe, I don't know, like uh, tw below 25 uh, years old, then maybe, again, TikTok might be a really good idea, even if they uh, haven't really posted most of their content there, right? If after all that we figure out like, hey, this is really taken off over the last weeks and our audience definitely is on this platform, uh, then, hey, let's map that out as one of your distribution channels. But again, this fits into, uh, again, this is uh, the next step here. This is where we now look at... Again, there's, uh, let me just open up the diagram here. There's these different types of channels, right? Things that your client owns directly, like their website and blog, their social media channels, their email newsletter, Facebook group, podcast, anything that they have like login information to, they uh, have straight up access to this, right? This is where mostly you're going to be working, right? Where if you're helping them distribute content, right? Maybe the main commercial that you produce is going to sit on their website. It's going to also get distributed on social media channels. Maybe you create some micro cut, cut variations uh, th uh, that you then uh, run some ads with, right? But that's already the next part here. These are the paid channels where literally you're just, uh, again, you are not paying for this, your client pays for this, and it's not, it's not uh, 
a cost, it's an investment, right? They, they invest ideally $1 in and want to get $2 out. That is the goal of paid advertising, right? You're not just like throwing dollars at the wall and like guessing around here. You're literally looking at, hey, for every X amount spent, we reached Y amount of people and Z amount of people checked out the product and actually purchased it, right? This is where just that basic stuff like the retargeting, literally just that alone. If your client already has traffic, existing traffic on their website, probably again, 99 to 95% of those people are not going to end up buying. So just literally just setting up some basic retargeting ads with some different uh, content variations there, just that alone might make a huge freaking difference. And then again, you could uh, run some direct ads on Facebook and Instagram as well, of course, social media ads or even Google ads, pay-per-click, right? So this is where, of course, there's not going to be any content really. But if I look for a vegan supplements, for example, or any product-based keyword, you, in most cases, there's going to be some ads here, right? This is an ad, this is an ad, this is an ad, this is an ad, and all of these on the site are ads. So that's another placement right there. Um, but again, probably most of you guys, uh, not, not too, too interesting if you don't want to run Google ads. Um, but that is, that is uh, what, what is usually considered as pay-per-click, right? Social media might be Facebook, Instagram, probably even YouTube, right? Uh, and then there's, of course, even influencer marketing. You can literally, uh, like here with a trucking company, we can now find some truck influencers, if there are any, and uh, potentially send them the product for free uh, or even pay them to do a shout out, for example. Uh, like uh, literally, that's, uh, show you Instagram, perfectionist. Here's a uh, kind of test reposting account where we've been testing a bunch of strategies uh, in the past and literally like influencer marketing and uh, I think total budget of $500 uh, is what got us to 27,000 followers. Like nothing too crazy. It's just like a repost account to test out some stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's where I've been testing out some influencer marketing and usually uh, I can tell you, uh, you want to start with something more predictable where you know exactly and you see it in the freaking dashboard as well. Like, let me just show you if you're running ads, you literally see for each of these variations that you're running, right? Casper right here, they're running all of these different variations, which in some cases is literally just switching out the, the headline and it's the same exact video. I'm looking for a variation like that right now. Um, yeah, if you look close enough, like, uh, let's see here. So yeah, all of these are slightly different. Um, but like in most cases, it's just a photo and some animated uh, text on that. I'll show you some tools and uh, hacks that you can use in a bit too. Uh, to create these types of videos. Um, but yeah, I'm not looking, finding what I'm looking for. Oh, look at this one here. It's the exact same creative, but if I click play now, there might be in one. Yeah, look, they just switched out the, the headline, right? That's it. That's maybe another variation. And for all of these variations, you then literally like, like science, you see all of the, wait, let me just pull up the report here. Let's do maximum and uh, let's go. Yeah, right. You see like how much have we spent? How many people did we reach? Right. For all of these different, um, oh, let's go into the main, main campaign right here. Right. For all of these different, uh, audiences that I've been targeting, right. Again, I'm, uh, trying to help you guys here, the filmmakers. So I'm targeting like what pages that you guys are more, most likely to follow. Right. And then I literally just see the data, right. I see like, Hey, American film Institute, uh, how, how did they perform? $8 per, per sign up for the group. Let's see how many people booked a call with me here. Uh, two people booked the call for $128. So this this was a good campaign. Uh, this was a good variation, right? Targeting American Film Institute. Whereas maybe as I scroll down again, you can literally sort this like a spreadsheet, right? So the idea is, uh, again, out of your ideas, you see the actual data. That's the idea of paid advertising, right? Um, and again, I'm not saying, telling you that you need to become a paid ads wizard here or start doing this for your clients, just knowing this and understanding this and working with your clients to create these different variations where you then test out again, one, one, one type of, uh, text with different, uh, images, right. And, uh, for pretty much 99% of my, uh, my ads that, uh, uh, I ran here for these variations, this one was the best performing creative, right. And the creative is the photo that you see, but then there's also the copy and the text that goes along with it. And uh, again, in my case, it's just an image with some text. And then again, you can run different variations and you see like, hey, this image with this text work best or this uh, text with this video. And uh, again, just split test those basically. That's the, the keyword here I wanna show you. And uh, again, you don't need to understand how to do all of this, just understanding that it is possible and planning for this and helping your client create those variations. Again, they, they could hire even somebody else to implement that. You could hire a, a contractor to help you. You could even uh, 
get a uh, white label agency to help you if you're working um, in any kind of mainstream industry like uh, real estate, restaurants. Literally, this is an agency. Uh, they work under you and uh, the client doesn't even know that it's another agency that they're speaking with, right? So you basically have an account manager who's running the ads for your clients. You supply them with the videos and the content and then they run the ads for your clients. Uh, and again, if you're in like a mainstream, uh, again, check out the industries that they serve. If you're like selling something very niche, like in our case, truck scales, uh, they probably haven't managed any truck scale company before. Um, so that probably wouldn't work. Um, but again, if, if you work with uh, like kind of usual types of clients, you could literally outsource this and the client never knows that there's another agency that they're working with. They speak with the uh, guy from their team, but it, on the reports and all of the billing, it is your brand name and your name that is getting billed. So that might be a solution if you don't, if you want to help your clients with running ads, but you don't want to be bothered learning this, then you don't need to, right? You just need to, again, understand the process, which is what we're going through right now map out the strategy because again you don't need to be the one running those ads right but you need to be the one that is producing that content because in the end it's going to be used as ads even if your clients don't run facebook ads if they post it on facebook or instagram it is an ad they are trying to reach people there but what they're doing is hoping praying and waiting that somebody might see it scrolling through for by accident clicking on some hashtag and luckily being in the same city as them like that's fucking like I, I don't know that's not that's not marketing that is uh that is uh again in this case not a hobby like with video videographers who who uh who don't do any marketing uh but that's again also not running a business or not doing marketing so yeah you need to map this out even if you're not the one implementing this you need uh and again you don't need to create their entire campaigns but you need to have a strategy you need to know again where who is the content for what worked in the past and now where are we going to even be posting it because if again you are helping you, you found out that your clients TikTok has taken off they're getting like hundreds of thousand followers every week and new sales and all of that then maybe that's a big platform to focus on for the next quarter or so to try that out and in that case like like that's a completely different format in it, first of all in terms of the actual aspect ratio first of all but also in terms of the mind frame that people are in on that platform right if you're producing content for TikTok, like that is not like people on youtube or uh, any of these other platforms they have the attention span of a fish and uh, you need to like already start with micro content ideas or if you're doing any form of long form content really figure out how you can make that work on TikTok. Um, and that's, of course, going to figure out like, hey, what are the content types that we're actually going to be producing, right? So before we actually even worry about what is it that we're actually going to be produce, we need to know what platform even is this going to be on, right? And that is determined, again, by what worked in the past and what didn't work. And that is determined by, of course, who is it that we're even going after. So you cannot skip any of these steps. I hope that is starting to make sense here. So again, at this point, we should know the audience, what worked in the past and what didn't. And now we map out the content uh, the distribution channels like where are we going to be posting this shit so uh well this content sorry excuse my language so uh the only third one that there was here is earned channels and this is something where again you don't need to uh this is something we like indirectly optimize for right mentions shares forums reviews guest posts right so this is nothing that you directly own nothing that you're paying for but this is where again if you do, we're doing a good job we're going to generate more reviews. We're going to generate more shares, right? Maybe if we do a giveaway here, we post that on our own channels. We promote that with some paid ads. We're definitely going to get some more uh, shares and mentions there, right? So we can always use paid ads to boost the organic promotion here and uh, even SEO to drive PR and sharing, right? So if you look for like, hey, get video clients on Google, I'm going to be ranking there somewhere, right? Uh, Looks like somebody outranked me here. My videos are ranking and then there's my video. So that is search engine optimization, right? So the better I optimize things here, uh, the more people are going to be likely to share this. I'll mention this, right? So I can always use SEO or PR to, for sharing here. And then, of course, we can always use the paid ads to market our website as well. But now, before, again, worrying about any of that, we just want to find those channels, which, again, if you already have access to your client's uh, websites and analytics, going to be quite easy as well as depending on where that audience actually hangs out so this is where um we have the own channels then we have the paid and earned channels and first of all we want to rate our own channels and this is where i've built a little matrix here for you guys to kind of remove the emotions and uh just get some cold hard ratings here that's where we can look at hey um 
And the idea is, again, we want to spend 80% of our efforts on one core platform, and then the other 20%, we can reformat the content for the other platforms, right? So again, might be, uh, where is the thing, right? Might be your main platform we produce, uh, we produce the videos for, and we want to make sure that all the micro content we can then create for all the other platforms as well. So, uh, yeah, this is where we now look at the, hey, how many of our potential audience can we reach here, right? So how many are, are using this channel? And there's some uh, tools uh, that are linked here, of course, as well, that you can use to get some of this data as well. Oh, yeah, another one I didn't show you guys in today's training yet here is um, uh, Spark Toro. This is also going to give you some more information, right? So vegan supplements, let's say that here. And there's different ways that you can filter. You can say my audience talks about, has these words in their profile, or follows these social accounts, visits these websites. So there's, there's many different ways of searching here. And uh, you see the keywords that they're using, the hashtags that they're using, frequently uh, used phrases. And uh, I believe also somewhere it uh, showed the uh, where most of these people hang out. If it's more Facebook, t Twitter, uh, Instagram, if it wasn't this tool, then it's another tool that's also linked in the worksheet. But yeah, you even get some more data right here. Uh, you need to, uh, of course, if you only have on a free account, some of this is limited, but you can, of course, once you sign a client upgrade here, then downgrade at any time again, if you need to, uh, or just use some of the free, free searches here. And then again, there's some other tools that show you where is this audience mainly hanging out. And then of course, some general knowledge of the platform that you can then just research as well. Like, uh, Social media, 2021 20, uh, demographic statistics. Like always get the latest statistics because it changes. Like TikTok a couple of years ago was literally just kids on there. Now I see more and more and more people kind of my age group going to TikTok. And uh, yeah, I, I still hate it. I don't have an account. So like, well, my opinions uh, don't dictate reality, right? So I want to look at, hey, how many people could we reach here? How much time are they spending on this platform? Probably TikTok, they're glued to that. But again, you can get those statistics there. Uh, and in general, like people are spending like most time, I think on, on YouTube, TikTok, then Instagram, then Facebook. Uh, but again, you can look at those, uh, statistics in general, uh, and then also use some of these other tools to look at your niche in general. Like where, what platform is the hashtag supplement used more on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, right? So that's, uh, that's another tool you could use to find out, Hey, how many people can I reach here? What is the general estimate of how much time are they spending on that platform? Uh, then what's the future growth projections, right? Twitter not really grown for years. TikTok again, still taking off. Uh, and then again, your skill sets, how well do they tie in with this channel, right? So again, blogging, let's say there was some like a lot of people in this audience were reading, none of them like really watching videos. So like maybe there's like not many people on, on Instagram, maybe a little bit, uh, not many people on YouTube, maybe a little bit more on uh, Instagram. Maybe not so many on Facebook, but a lot of them are uh, on their blog or on your client's blog or reading content in general, right? Again, there's different audiences uh, who prefer to consume a lot of video content. Like I would say filmmakers, they watch a shit ton of video content. Um, but other audience, they might prefer reading, right? But then again, if your skill sets doesn't really tie into here, like uh, that might be only a two, then of course that is another big factor and the enjoyment factor as well, right? Because again, if this is what you're helping your clients with and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, how much do you actually enjoy using this channel, right? Um, but this is not weighted as much as these other ones, right? So this is where now after you're filling all of this out, you're gonna get a score. So you sw switch to step number two here. And then the highest scoring platform will be at the top. And then you could look at, hey, which of these, uh, again, in the template, all of these is empty here, of course, for you. And then you look at, hey, which of these does the client already have? Maybe he has an Instagram, a website, a blog, a Facebook, a YouTube, a LinkedIn, uh, and maybe a TikTok. And then we're going to look at, hey, which ones are we going to commit to, right? So what are the platforms that we're going to be posting? And that would probably be uh, Instagram, Facebook, and then maybe YouTube and LinkedIn, right? Depending on what the score is. And uh, whatever you selected here, it's going to show up then in your selected channels. The same thing would be the case for the earned and uh, paid channels, right? The paid ads on Facebook and Google or YouTube. This is where we look at, hey, what does the client already have? Which ones are we going to commit to? And after filling all of that out or just clicking the check boxes, pretty much, you have your distribution channels mapped out, right? Then you know, hey, these are the own channels we're going to be publishing to. These are the paid channels that we're going to be supplementing the traffic uh, with. And then these are the earned channels that we're going to try and earn ourselves here. And uh, yeah, now we know exactly who is it that's going to watch this content or that we are even creating this content for. We know exactly what worked in the past and what didn't work. 
and we know exactly where this audience hangs out or where we're most likely to help your clients reach that message and get more of what worked in the past, right? So at this point, audience mapped out, content audited, distribution channels mapped out. So now we're getting into the fun stuff here. So that is creating the con well, mapping out the content types, the goals and that we're going to be optimizing for and then creating that content. So that's pretty much the rest of the training here. Uh, let me just uh, regroup here. So again, at this point, we're pretty much halfway through here. So this is where the micro content and uh, well, the main content and micro content concept comes in, right? So the, the more of this you can do where you're producing one video and you're turning that into maybe 10 videos, that's of course the easiest workflow, well, way easier than going out there and creating like a lot of different variations of content. And uh, then of course, the easier uh, you can make it yourself to maybe reuse different photos and uh, video clips in different variations of content, of course, uh, the better, right? So like this animation, I can guarantee you, they are not just using in this, uh, in this format and this uh, Instagram story here, right? So that, that took a lot of work to create this here. Like that's that's some 3D stuff right there. That's crazy. Yeah, Jeremy, you should do something like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, that's what you again might be looking at here. Yeah, here's some real life action footage, which is uh, again maybe some clips cut together that you can then repurpose in different formats. So this is I think the same one. Like look at it. It's literally a screenshot or okay, it's not. It's a photo. But uh, yeah, you can take f photos on set as well, screenshots. And now the, the better you plan these types of content pieces that you create, uh, the, the easier it's gonna be for you to mass produce everything, right? So as you can, can see here, it's the exact same video. Just switch out the headlines, for example. And again, that might be one content piece. It's like a story, short form uh, assembly video, right? So I see they have a lot of these assembly ones where people take it out of the box, they assemble things together, right? So that was the same one here, right? It shows kind of how, how, how you can put it together. That's one of their content types, right? So let's get into this here. So there's different ways of how you can look at uh, content. There's topics, there's types, and then there's the, the angle. Right, so the type would be like, hey, is it a video? Is it a photo? Is it a GIF or GIF or teaser? Uh, is it a story? Is it a poll? Right, I do those uh, in the Facebook group a lot. Right, just polling you guys what, what topic you want me to talk about, and uh, that might be the content type. Then of course there's the topic, right? What is it covering? Is it nutrition, fitness, exercise, diet, or recipe? For example, if this was like health related uh, industry. And in this case here with the Casper one, like let's identify here. So this is again, of course, a story video type and uh, uh, right here, right? And then the topic would be in this case, potentially assembly, right? So um, let's scroll down here. So again, this is where we have a bunch of uh, ways to now start brainstorming ideas. And this is where, again, within pretty much one day, you will be coming up with like, I can guarantee you at least half a year of content. Uh, <laughs> creation is of course another topic. I'll show you there how you can streamline that in a second, but kind of up with ideas is what we're starting with here. And again, this is depending on these, these uh, channels again, as well as the, the audiences that we defined, what would be the topics that are interested in them? And we already researched this at this point, right? Answer the public, you're gonna get some uh, information. Spark Toro, you're gonna get some information, right? So here's all the questions people might have asked on answer the public. Spark Toro, we see see some topics as well and podcasts, that, websites that I listen to, that we can check out those websites while they're saying there. And look at the ma main topics here. Like, let's just go through this here, actually. Websites, and again, there's not a complete linear process, which is why, again, I'd highly, highly encourage you to, uh, to go ahead and uh, sign up, oh, Jesus Christ, for the uh, beta pr program here, where I'm literally going to sit down with you and... Uh, whether in the group, co group coaching session or one-on-one -on -one session, we're gonna map all of this out for your clients because this is not a linear process. So here's just an example. You might visit some blogs and look at what are the topics that they have, right? So this is for supplements. Literally, these are topics. Beauty, food, health, movement, mindfulness, social good, parenting. Like, look at that. That's already uh, all of the main tip things that we have here, right? So let's say, I don't know, um, mindfulness was one of them. Maybe mindful. And then that is our main topic. 
Now I can create some top topics that we can speak about, like maybe meditation, maybe bre breath exercises, and then maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, like general mindfulness tips or whatever, right? So these might be subtopics under this main topic that we can talk about. And uh, again, for the Casper mattresses, right? One of them might be, uh, the, the, the topic might be uh, assembly, right? So uh, uh, the subtopic might be uh, easy delivery. There may be fast setup. Right. And then these are different subtopics where each of these we can then milk like crazy. We can cover that from different angles and different content types. Right. Just like here alone, like they have so many different variations of showing the assembly. Right. Like this one here, it's uh, some Asian uh, guy and uh, woman apparently here that are assembling this here. Then we have another one here where it's uh, these guys like it's the same idea. It's like assembly showing showing uh, the, the box, how they set it up. And then there's all of these different ways that you could uh, show this, right? Look at this here again. And again, you guys get the idea. This is nothing crazy. You set it up once, you got your light, you slap your camera on there. Like, again, like, this is nothing uh, too crazy to film. And uh, literally within like an hour or so, okay, this that definitely takes a little bit more setup and moving things. But again, within a day or so, you can bash out so many variations of this. And then even in post, you can create this into different variations as well. So just the fast setup, maybe what the delivery can have some. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, custom uh, assembly, right? Also customizability might be another big thing for Casper mattresses. I'm not sure if you can like choose the layers of what you want here. I'm not a Casper mattress expert. I just like to show their ads as examples, but uh, you get the idea depending on your niche. Uh, well, depending on your target audience of who's going to consume that content, there's different topics that they're interested in and every topic you can turn into subtopics, literally just like look into Google, right? So like, uh, like truck scales, let's go back to the truck scales example. Like usually there should be some, uh, hey, people also ask, you see that here, right? Like that is content ideas right there. Depending on what questions you click on here, by the way, it's gonna bring up more questions similar to that. So uh, let's click on this one usually, and then you, you can close this down again. Again, as you see, oh, Jesus Christ, it opened up more here. So let's click on that one. You want to make sure you're somewhat relevant because if I just click, keep clicking on any random ones, you're going to have some very random stuff here. But that's just an idea of how you can um, uh, to to get some more content ideas. So you can just literally, I think, keep clicking on the top one as well, open and close. I think that should work as well. So that's just another potential I source of content ideas. Literally, you're looking at what Google uh, people are also asking for, or again, looking at the at this. Uh, search predictions here or quick hack here you can uh click a asterisk the the star here and it's going to show you words before this word right so if i click that there now we see what other people are looking for that public truck scales certified truck scales okay so uh yeah that might be another source of getting some more ideas um but again these aren't just these solo pieces of content you can create these are whole topics that we can cover right so this was for vegan shampoo here like just about greasy hair, we can come up with like 30 different uh, content pieces we can create. Just about broken hair as well. Just about why chemicals suck for your health and shampoos. We can create so much content about that. And this is where the angles come in, right? We could cover this from a uh, kind of review standpoint, right? Have a review, customer review, review how it helped her with greasy hair. Or we could do a um, maybe a... Uh, Fact, facts about why regular shampoo uh, makes your hair more greasy than non-greasy, right? Or we could do celebrity story. Hey, why uh, Tom Cruise switched to vegan shampoo? Or God knows what, right? So there's all of these different angles where the exact same topic we can cover from all of these different angles, right? Just like the preacher in church that every Sunday is pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's like people gotta like you gotta repeat the message over and over until it, until it sinks in and there's all of these different angles that you can cover things from right so just from these two concepts here it's pretty much you can use it as a matrix right combine all of these angles here with all of these topics you will be able to come up with so many ideas <laughs> hope you're starting to to see the, the bigger picture here guys so that is where um 
Again, at this point, you can then just select, hey, which of these content angles are we going to be doing? You should have input your topics now, right? And again, that's where literally go to blogs in your market, right? So trucking blog, <laughs> I don't know if there's a trucking blog, let's see. Uh, and then just look at, hey, what are the categories that they have on their blog, right? So literally, uh, there should be a category section and uh, safety regulations health, truck driving trips, lifestyle, right? Those might be all topics, uh, general topics that we can cover content about. And then again, we combine that with the content angles. This is where it's down to you and the client, which ones you like to do or which ones fit best for your client's uh, use cases. And uh, again, if you come up with any other ideas, feel free to add them to the list, but this is just a sample here. And then after you selected that, that one, of course, you can uh, just look at the list here. So, hey, maybe we're going to do a re review about greasy hair, right? So, uh, let's say review greasy hair from regular shampoo. Like why you get greasy hair. Why you get greasy hair from vegan shampoo. And what I'm doing right here, it's basically linked up to a content calendar already. So at this point, we can already start generating all of these ideas. We look at the angles, we look at the topics, and then we just, uh, depending on which ones it is, we click into here, and this is gonna start mapping out your whole content calendar. And then the third way that we can combine these content ideas now, like if this is not enough to come up with a lot of content, then you can even stack this with the content types, right? So maybe you want to do some text posts, maybe some quotes, maybe some graphics, maybe some giveaways. And uh, then again, we could literally uh, repurpose content. Where's the thing here? The reuse usage workflow where maybe, hey, you haven't, you come, came up with an idea or you found a blog post that you want to now uh, do something similar to then, hey, is this outdated and the featured information not useful anymore because of it? You could just update it. And if no, is it incomplete or something can be added to make it more accurate, relevant or useful? You could just expand on it and more on that in just a bit. And uh, could it be covered in other formats that will make it easier to use and understand? You could just reformat it. And that's the thing right here, right? So maybe it's a long video. Maybe you can create some text posts out of it or maybe an infographic, right? So if you don't know what an infographic is, then I don't know, let me show you a video marketing infographic, right? So instead of having like, a, I don't know, all along life training like I have it here, I could create an infographic that shows you in one simple uh, visual, all of these steps here. I should probably do that. So uh, again, like this live stream right here, I can reformat that into an infographic potentially, right? So um, that's the idea here. So we could literally just reformat it and that's the content types, right? So what type of content is it text? Is it quotes? Is it a graphic? Is it a short video that could be on like a story or is it a longer video that could be like a YouTube video? And uh, again, what is the angle that we're covering this from and what is the overall topic? And by mix and matching all of these together, you're gonna be coming up with unlimited ideas. And if not, then you keep going through this cycle here which again, hey, if it can't be covered in, or reformatted in a different format, then maybe, hey, you could gather some more information uh, into a new piece of content and just curate things, right? So maybe somebody did like, hey, five reasons of why you need uh, a truck scale. And then maybe you find some other posts and we can combine those all into like, hey, 10 reasons why you never want to drive without a truck scale, right? So we just curate all of these ideas together. Like I, for example, you... Uh, how to get video clients, right? So I saw all of these guys doing videos like, hey, four ways to get video clients and all of that stuff. And uh, then I decided to just make a video, 31 ways to get video clients, right? Just combining all the ideas and my own ones to curate a new type of content. Um, or you could just refocus it, right? From a different type of perspective, right? So maybe you've done um, the greasy hair from a health uh, standpoint, and then you could do content on greasy hair from the, uh, again, depending on that target audience that we set here, there's the there's the health nerd, right? You're going to get them with why it's unhealthy. But then the sustainability and animal rights person, like, hey, because um, this makes your hair greasy, you need to wash it way more often, which is bad for the environment, right? That's a whole different angle or, um, yeah, focus of the topic, right? So just this workflow here again, you, you can just, again, refocus that for a different audience, for example. And just based off one single idea, we could come up with all of these different variations here again, just going following through that process or literally just mix and matching our topics with the types and the angles. So that was a shit ton, guys. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much the 
main gist of it. So at this point, mm, at this point, we set the uh, the goals, and I'm gonna jump over that here uh, in today's training. Again, we covered this briefly in uh, the last training, and again, if you're getting this far here, selling this uh, type of project to your clients already, then again, go ahead, book that call with me. Let's uh, let's figure out if and how I can help you. Again, the only reason that we don't have a public price and aren't already sold out here is uh, I need to make sure that you are a good fit because we're literally going to sit down together and map this out for your clients, right? So you're going to get on the call, get to unmute yourself, and we're going to look at your, your client's data, look at what kind of numbers we will be looking at here. And KPI is just a fancy word of key performance indicator, right? So instead of shooting blind and just posting the content out there or throwing the spaghettis at the wall without looking, we want to uh, know, hey, what of these numbers are we looking at here? If you were running ads, for example, if we're not running ads, then there's other places to find this data. And I, I uh, covered that in last week's training. Then, uh, of course, we want to know, hey, what are we aiming for here, right? I know that uh, anything um, below $150 to $200 per call is good for me. But this uh, campaign or variation right here, I spent $700 per call. Like that's definitely not good. So um, again, because that is um, too much for now, and we covered that briefly in last call. If, and if you get this far in terms of really helping clients drive those results, there's no reason why uh, you, you haven't booked your call yet because uh, you will make your money back at least five to 10 times. I can guarantee you that literally all you're gonna get back your investment. So uh, yeah, that is that. So we're gonna map that out together or check out last week's training there. And that that's going to allow you then to define your goal, which is summing all of these up basically into one specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely goal. And you can just input that here. And uh, that's, of course, going to be in your main report view as well. So we go to the recap here. That is at the top view here. And at that point, we should have your goal defined, the, the client's uh, funnel or strategy audited. Uh, we should know the audience that we're going after. We have mapped out the KPIs. So we know what are we looking at in month one? What are we looking at in month two in terms of goals? What were we aiming for? How many posts are we doing per week? What should that bring in terms of uh, revenue? And uh, that way we know, hey, are we in the green? Are we in the red? And where and what we need to optimize? That's why we do these numbers here. So we also have the distribution channels mapped out, right? We know where are we going to be posting things? We, we know the content types the topics. And uh, at this stage, all that is left is really mapping out that content calendar and getting into creation mode. So again, before you do that, map out your, your goals. Let me just scroll here. I should have just used the skipping form here. You should have mapped out your goals right here. And uh, Again, I'm going to skip that here. We go into way more detail than uh, last tra uh, training, as well as, of course, in the actual beta launch here. And that's where you can then project your actual results for you guys just starting out with this. Just skip this part for now, right? You can help your clients without doing this here. Uh, that is just for, again, literally knowing down to the dollar, how much are we spending? How much are we making? What is the exact numbers? Again, this is how you, how you can charge the big bucks. So... You don't need to go that far though. So at this point, you should have enough to come up with a shit ton of content ideas. So as you scroll all the way to the bottom, now that we've done the work, we can uh, use this to basically combine our content types, topics, and angles to generate a shit ton of ideas here. And uh, yeah, let me just uh, show you then. So basically, just scroll all the way down to the bottom. And this is where you have all of your selected types, topics, and angles. This one was a sample one I put in there. Let's just delete that. There we go. Cool. And then you can just mix and match basically, right? Or maybe get a piece of paper out and just brainstorm first of all, right? Then second source is of course, uh, answer the public. You can t put in different keywords, right? Based off your research, there might be some different topics now that you discovered based off looking at uh, some of these blogs, influencers that they're following, uh, people in the market, right? Um, you might get some ideas for different topics and questions that you put in here to see what other questions people have. And each of these questions are content ideas, right? What supplements to take for vegans? Uh, how are vegan supplements made? Uh, yeah, all these ideas. Again, you read through this here. This is not a completely linear process. And again, if you don't want to break your head, just click on the data view, 
read through all of these and any ideas that you can see here that might be a good content idea, you can start putting that into here, right? So um, again, I'm just gonna do the brainstorming route because that's usually how I come up with uh, a lot of ideas as well. Uh, yeah, no worries, Jeremy, I got that. Uh, cool, so this is where we can now uh, come up with some ideas. So let's say, um, we're gonna have an animal rights post. Let's do a quote about that, right? With a fact, right? Let's do a fact uh, quote about animal rights, right? <laughs> like, that's you just look up. So facts or uh, statistics, uh, yeah, let's do animal rights statistics. Like literally just taking that, that's just, I don't know, I'm gonna take the first thing I see. You get the idea, right? You, you just, uh, that might be a piece of content. So I don't know, let's say, Get one with like a percent in there, it's always nice. So they don't have percentage here. Let's say this was our thing here, and then you could literally go to canva.com and uh, create design, <laughs> could be like an Instagram post, slap on a template there. And again, you would build these out, pre build these with your clients, so you have kind of a brand kit or whatever. Um, and uh, I don't know, let's, let's choose this one, and maybe this was then the person that said the um, slap that in here. You put in the person that said it, put in their quote, and uh, that might already be your post right there. And then you might want to turn that into a video. That's where Canva now literally has some freaking animation thing. And I could just like slap on the, the page animation and that's gonna, let's use this one. That's gonna animate this whole thing and boom. That's, oh, Jesus Christ. That is already uh, the, uh, I think I will play here. That's already an ad variation right there, right? So again, of course, maybe, maybe again, your client's branding uh, might be green. Uh, and that's where you just uh, select the yellow, oh Jesus, select the yellow elements and uh, you, you slap that, maybe make that maybe the brand color, right? Oh, that one was missing. You get the idea, right? So that's, again, that might be as far as creating the content. Of course, first you map it all out and then there might be a bunch of um, content, that, a bunch of quotes that you create. Again, I don't just sit down and create one quote. That's why we plan it all out. And then we have maybe 50 quotes that we want to post. And then in one session, I'm going to, again, prepare all of that and batch create everything. And within like an hour or so, I can guarantee you I've, I've created like 50 of these quote posts. And then if we post two of those a week, we got like, uh, yeah, almost a year worth of content. So yeah, if one, one a week, we got like uh, one year of quotes already with 50 weeks, right? <laughs> you get the idea? So that, that's as far, much as that might be. Again, I might have one template where that's the image on the right, one template where there's the image on the left, maybe one with an image at the bottom, and then I just mix and match so we don't have the exact same layout every single week, right? But that might be one of the easy types of content I can produce without even having to shoot or film anything. So uh, yeah, let's, I don't know, go random. Let's, I don't know, ocean, uh, promoting the product and uh, short video, right? We could do a short video uh, about uh, why this uh, shampoo doesn't produce any ocean waste, right? That might be one. So uh, again, let's uh, let's just add that down here as an example sake. So uh, why our shampoo does not create any ocean waste, right? That will be if, like this way you can now start mapping things out. This is probably for the consideration phase here. The content type is going to be a, a short video. And then the, the topic is going to be like the environment here, right? And now we have it all mapped out. So this is where you keep on adding and adding and adding through mix and matching these together through going through web websites like Answer the Public. Spark Toro, looking at uh, the different podcasts and YouTube channels here. Actually, let's do that real quick. Literally, there's going to be some YouTube channels that uh, I don't see it here. Uh, they're blurred out. But again, you might find YouTube slash vegan supplements. You might find some, uh, again, look at the most viewed videos here that are taken off. Look at some of these influencers in this market. I uh, know, let's say this was like a vegan supplement influencer or whatever. Look at their videos and uh, sort that by most viewed, right? Look at, hey, what's taken off in general here? Like, hey, uh, recipes in general, like probably that's all she does anyways, but uh, yeah, like cheap, hey, $1.50 a day recipes, right? So like, hey, how you can make your own shampoo for this and that money, right? Even if we're selling our shampoo, we could help them make their own cheap shampoo, right? I don't know, this is probably not the best example for this market here, so... Um, Let's say, uh, yeah, like right now I'm reaching out to some like uh, gardening channels. There's, for example, uh, this guy called uh, Curtis 
stone or farmer right if i'm going if i'm producing content for people in the gardening industry then i could look at his channel for example look at what's most popular here microgreens right make 10k a month grow microgreens like that got a click from me so uh yeah maybe that's some content that they could produce again this is depending on who is your audience uh uh again we've done that in the research part who is uh where does your audience hang out what, what kind of platforms do they hang out and then we just look at other related people that they're following right we mapped let's go back up here we mapped all of this out already right who are they following what um what platforms do they hang out on right what are the desires triggers and we can just look, look that up on google on youtube and look at other content that people are producing and then literally just run that to the repurposing workflow or we then create uh, different, let's scroll here, different uh, topics out of that, different angles that we're covering it from, or we just turn it into a whole different content type. And uh, again, by doing that, we're gonna keep on adding, 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 and uh, Spark Toro, uh, answer the public, looking at other people's blogs here, right? Literally just taking their blog maybe, putting that into BuzzZumo, where I can then check out, hey, from this uh, website, which posts, uh... oh shit, they need, want me to log, force me log in here. So yeah, you set up a free trial account or just use the free plan. I think you only have one search per day for, for free. Um, but then you see them, the most uh, trending posts on this website. Uh, or again, you could put that into SparkToro again. Let's say you found like the go-to website in your market. You put that in here. My audience frequently visits this website here. Let's say, hey, filmmakers, a lot of time, like them like no film school.com that's a big uh website for filmmakers and then i could put that in here my audience frequently visits this website and then uh it's gonna pull that report here of course it's gonna take a second then i could look at hey what like what do they have in their bio filmmaker producer editor films what hashtags do they use right and most interestingly what other social accounts do they follow uh podcasts websites right and then i might check these out get some ideas here for my own content in this case here uh and again this is where you enter your m m niche your market and uh go down the rabbit hole right again you might enter your like niche keyword here which might be vegan supplements um trucking whatever the, the that niche is and then you go through that rabbit hole you find websites here the the most uh, trending websites that there are in this market and then you maybe pull another report based off that website right here, right? By switching it from talks about to visit this website. And uh, just that alone, then going to that website, of course, is gonna help you come up with so many content ideas, right? Don't just steal stuff, right? That's not what I'm saying here. Yeah, repurpose things, um, combine ideas, right? So again, make it your own, make it your own by mix and matching the types, topics, and angles. And uh, just based off that free, work, completely free workflow that I showed you here, guys, you will come up with so many content ideas, right? Another thing I showed you, Google autocomplete, and there's a uh, YouTube autocomplete, right? So you could, um, um, like, let's do again, youtube.com slash gardening. That was your niche, right? Type in the main general keyword, look at what are the topics that people are covering, right? B ideally look at stuff that is recent, right? Within the last year with a lot of views. Right, and then you might start to see some patterns here, and uh, you can also use autocomplete, right? Gardening, and then you could look at what are people looking at here. So uh, again, truck scales. I want just just look at that truck scales, uh, spring suspension, onboard truck scales, airway truck scales. How do truck scales work? Mirror made truck scales. Okay, that's interesting, right? Or I could do uh, with the asterisk in front of it again, right? That's gonna show me some more stuff. And all of these are, again, people searching for this. So there's gonna be traffic for that. And those are all ideas that you, <laughs> let's go Brandon, that you can uh, that you can basically, uh, yeah, repurpose, create, cover from different topics, cover from a different angle, or turn into a different content type. And uh, that is a completely free workflow just uh, as of now. So then when it comes to the creation of the content, we're gonna jump into some crazy shit now. So all content needs words, whether that's blog articles, social media posts themselves on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, your YouTube video descriptions, and even the videos themselves, they need a uh, copy. They need a script, right? And it's all copywriting. That's, that's the high level word or term for, um, for uh, yeah, any text-based stuff. 
And uh, this is where over the last year or so, there's been some insane stuff happening in the background. So let me just show you some goodness. So this is, uh, if you go to pushrec.com slash AI, you can basically follow around here and uh, get a free trial with, I think, 10,000 words or something. Um, pushrec.com slash AI. Um, I should probably just slap that in the chat here. There you go. So you can get a free trial there. And uh, now after all of our research here, we are going to be able to literally plug and play some of these, uh, some of these uh, tools here to basically come up with a shit ton of uh, content. So literally, just when it comes to generating content ideas, there's, for example, the blog post uh, topic ideas generator. And I can literally put in here, so let's say uh, we're selling like vegan shampoo. That's the product. And then product description, uh, uh, vegan shampoo with uh, no plastics or harmful chemicals. Uh, that might be like, again, garbage in, garbage out. The better your quality your input, the better the output. So this is where, now that we research our audience, we can even put in our audience here. So like, uh, maybe it might be uh like climate and uh animal rights activists right so i could literally generate some ideas and tone of voice you can keep that open for now um and just generate some ideas here so literally just click generate and whatever it comes up with here you can basically start adding that to the examples for training so um 10 methods for cutting down on plastic in the bathroom. That's some good general awareness type content. We're not speaking about the product just yet, but if you don't care about our vegan shampoo just yet, but you're caring about the environment, you're going to check out that content, right? So that's some good content for uh, the top of the funnel here. Get some people to stop scrolling or maybe even to start to consider things. So, hey, let's do that. Add that to the examples. How your hair is a mirror of the health of your planet. Wow, that's good. That's really good. Uh, five myths, myths about the food industry. Let's change that about the... Uh, uh hair and shampoo industry right let's do that instead and i don't know why you can change that there so boom and again now it's added that to the training here basically and uh now when i click generate again of course it's going to change if you switch out these things here as well so if i was going to now put in here like health nerd then uh it's going to make it more related to that, but it's still going to take these into consideration. So I would actually stay focused here, generate a shit ton of ideas for this one target persona, and then do the same workflow again, remove all of these training examples and change out the audience again. If you want to get some more better outputs, you want to put in better descriptions here, right? So uh, again, you might have already researched your market and you might know some of the problems, right? So um, uh, this is where we now can describe your audience again a little bit. So um, uh, there are no affordable uh, yet high quality options. Regular shampoo uh, makes the hair greasy. Uh, the customers uh, don't, again, whatever you found out in your research, right? Uh, don't know where to buy this, uh, the best type of vegan shampoo, right? Again, like the more quality stuff you put in, the more quality is going to come out. This is not really the best here. Uh, but again, depending on your researcher, you're going to have some good stuff. And uh, if I now click generate again, it's going to take that into consideration, of course, as well as the examples. And I can keep on generating and then literally just copy and paste all of the ideas that we have here into our freaking content calendar that I just lost. There we go. So uh, literally, you can just slap them all in here. So uh, look at this now, the best place to buy vegan shampoo, right? Because I put that in here. Uh, how helps Mother Earth? Why is vegan shampoo important? Like, that's cool. Best place to buy it. 10 ways to stop your diet from hurting animals. Oh, that's cool, right? So you see, this is now all related about the climate and animal rights activist. So now if I was doing one batch here, copied all of these ideas for this target persona, then uh, I might want to get some more ideas for the health nerd, right? So let's remove the training examples here. Um, yeah, let's, 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 it's the exact same input here. I'm gonna, just going to switch this out with health nerd, uh, woman health nerd. Let's make it a woman as well. 
because most of based off our research, right, we, we mapped out like, hey, who is our audience? Where do they hang out? And we might have found out, hey, it's usually it's mostly women in this demographic. Then, hey, let's write that in here. Women like we could even put in like 30 year old women here. So, uh, yeah, this is where it's now going to put that as our audience. So your hair deserves the best how to clean your hair without chemicals. Uh, what should you be buying? Hundred good ones will make your hair feel greasy. How to wash your hair without damaging it? Yeah, that's a cool one here. And uh, let's just generate some more. And again, if you're uh, on the pro plan here, you can literally go crazy on this year. I always have this on the maxi and just like slap generate over and over again. And literally, this is just one of the templates, guys. Here, when it comes to creating, uh, coming up with ideas here, this can actually help you come up with your whole posts and content as well. Which is uh, where I'm going to be publishing a full-on training within uh, the next week or so. That's going to be one of the bonuses, basically, for the for the launch here. So, uh, and again, I, I can't can't have that out in the public because uh, that's literally the, the workflow that me and my one-on-one -on -one clients are using. But literally, all of these ideas, you can use this tool to create all of the content as well, right? So do you know all the ingredients in your hair products? That's a good hook. How to pick the best shampoo for your hair type? What's in shampoo? 12 vegan shampoo preferences you can trust. How to find the best? Five things you need to know about vegan shampoo, right? That's a cool one. So uh, yeah, that's coming up with the ideas here, like literally using AI. So um, here's another way that you could work with this. Literally go the free flow mode. You, you, I don't think you get this in the trial though. Again, go to pushrec.com slash AI and you can get like 10,000 words credit basically. Uh, but I don't think this is included here. So this is where um, in the free flow editor, right? So uh, I could maybe say let's we want to write some Facebook ads here now. Uh, Facebook ad for vegan shampoo, and then write a Facebook write a Facebook ad for this, and then tone of voice. Uh, let's actually write in here so the target audience audience is vegan women health nerds there we go tone of voice uh intriguing maybe right you can change this out you can put in joe rogan or whatever you want and uh literally i could now uh tell it to write let's just actually paste that here again just to be safe and then i could literally tell the ai to write uh write a facebook ad for the product above and i can literally just hit run Probably it's going to embarrass me now. Uh, it's just coming up with bullet points here. Um, right. A long form Facebook, right? Long form Facebook ad copy. Might be more direct here. Always wants to embarrass me when I want to show things here. The best shampoo for you here. Vegan plastic free, th though the idea was <laughs> tough. Thoughts you had to choose between affordable and quality. Like, look at this here. Like, that's literally. Uh, Literally a freaking uh, ad right there. Now we can literally uh, slap these here into here. Boom. And that's an ad, right? Then we just have a call to action and boom. That's That might be uh, that. Might be that. And then I could be uh, tell it to generate some Facebook ad headlines for the above. And this is literally, you can tell the AI what you want it to do. It, like, I mean, I'm just, again, scratching the surface right here. There's going to be another training next week that won't be a live stream. It's going to be basically just for the people that signed up for the uh, beta masterclass. And again, you can sign up there if you haven't already. And uh, that's where we're going to go way, way deeper into these AI tools and systems and really go all the way crazy. But yeah, this is basically... The high level concept of what is possible again we've got a bunch of uh headlines here that we can use we've got a, the actual ad itself and uh this was just a free flow editor here right so uh we could literally go into the power mode here and use some of these marketing frameworks like ida that's a famous uh, marketing framework vegan shampoo and uh tone of voice let's do uh persuasive and let's generate that And uh, that means attention, interest, desire, action. That is a very, very popular marketing framework. And literally these, you can then plug and play, copy, mix and match things together and act for your actual posts as well. So do you want to have beautiful hair without using harmful chemicals? We are a company that makes vegan shampoo. Our products is made. Well, I would just say like, hey, we are a company name. Our products is ma are made with natural ingredients and no plastics or other harmful chemicals. It's the best option for people who care about their health, animals and the environment. You can buy our shampoo right now, blah, blah. Okay, you get the idea, right? So... 
There's just some ideas. Our shampoo has no plastic or chemicals, the best type of vegan. Like again, this could, could use some work. And again, the better input, you can have 600 characters in here. So you better do your due diligence, really get in there, figure out what are their triggers, their desires, their avoidances, and literally just plug that in here. And this is where, again, I can't share the full workflow with you guys because uh, it's just too powerful. And that's what I'm, uh, right now is reserved for the people in the beta group because uh, it's literally changed the complete the, the, the whole game. Once you have this mapped out here, and you have kind of your mix and match elements. It's basically like a recipe where you tell it like, hey, this is my target audience. This is the pains that they have. This is the desires that they have. This is the uh, what they already try to achieve this problem. And uh, again, literally just, again, the better quality you give it here, the better quality the output's gonna be. And then if you combine that with mix and matching some of these marketing frameworks here, um, then uh, like <laughs> there's absolutely, I'm going to show you in a second how you can combine this with another tool and it is absolutely insane. There's uh, there's no way that your competition can keep up with this type of service. So anybody not using AI will get cut. I, I can guarantee you that. If you, you're right now like, oh, I don't, I don't care about this, you will get cut out by AI tools within the next one, two, three years. And it's only a matter of time until full-on video production is next. Right, this is just text-based stuff, and I'm not saying you can just copy and paste this and just use it. Right, you still need to edit things. Right, this is like your uh, copywriting assistant. You don't need to do any thinking anymore, or like look at the stare at the blank pages. If you have done your research, literally plug and play the process. And again, we're gonna w walk through a whole AI content training next week. That is uh, for people that signed up for the for the beta here. And uh, again, literally. It's game over, right? So the like, <laughs> as it embarrassed me here, right? So you don't always get the best results here, uh, and sometimes it embarrasses you, right? So regular shampoo leaves your hair greasy and can damage it. The more natural, like that's a good hook, right? You could lead in with that. Uh, we all know that we should care about our health, but most of us don't have the time or money for a personal trainer and healthy lifestyle coach. Well, that's interesting, cool. So yeah, like I like this interesting uh, that this uh, start section here, maybe not the health uh, lifestyle coach. Uh, but yeah, you can again mix and match these uh, together. This one was the uh, PAS framework, kind of states the problem, then it agitates it, it, it rubs it in, and then it presents the solution, right? So that's another cool little framework that you can use to create the actual content itself or the, the copy, right? This could be your video script as well. And uh, more on that in a second, how you can literally create a video uh, without even shooting anything. So. Again, vegan shampoo is a new niche. Many people are not aware of this type of product and how it differs from regular shampoos. Uh, there are no affordable yet high quality options for vegan shampoo at the moment, right? So you can estate it, it agitates it, and then it presents the solution. We create a solution for this problem by creating an organic, place -free, uh, organic plastic free vegan shampoo made from pure plant extract without harmful chemicals. Our formula is 100% natural and contains only certified organic ingredients. Like, look at that. That would speak to that audience, probably. I would break it up a little bit, slap some emojis in here, and uh, maybe slap some persuasive bullet points in there, right? So, uh, and of course there's a template for that. So literally just click generate and then you're gonna get some persuasive bullet points. You can always combine that with your uh, with your text. And uh, there we go. Organic, cruelty-free, sulfur, problem, die-free. You would of course need to check that with a client. 100% biodegradable. Like, look at these. These are all, uh, all benefits that you can slap in. Of course, they wouldn't know the exact price, right? So you would need to of course fact check that. But uh, all of these are perfectly usable, or at least are going to get your brain ticking, and uh, you don't need to worry at all when it comes to how do I actually create this, write all of this stuff, and uh, turn all of those ideas that we mapped out here into actual content now. That is going to be as easy as cake, right? So uh, that's just some of the templates here. Again, let's do one more. Let's do the, um, the BAB. That's another marketing framework that I like. Uh, before, after bridge, this one. So vegan shampoo, and then let's do, I don't know, intriguing, oh, like excited, let's do that. And uh, let's check that out. That's just another marketing framework here, man. You could use those, or you could literally use the Facebook uh, primary text. They have a template there, that one works too. Or Instagram caption, if it's more for Instagram. So uh, yeah, you love your hair, but you hate the chemicals and regular shampoo. You've tried using vegan shampoo before, but they never worked on you, uh, worked for you. Imagine having natural shampoo that cleanses your hair without stripping it of its natural oils. It's made with all natural ingredients and it's free of harmful chemicals like parabens, sulfates, blah, 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 blah. Plus it seems, uh, plus it smells great too. Maybe a little emoji there. Uh, our shampoo is 100% plant-based and contains no plastic or harmful chemicals. It's also cruelty-free and safe, uh, safe for color-treated hair. 
And best uh, of it all, it actually works. Stop wasting time and money on products that don't work for you anymore. Try and look that it's kind of stopped there here. So I'm going to do a little hack here. I'm going to paste that and uh, going to blow your mind now. I can literally uh, 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 stop wasting money but don't work anymore. And then try and then literally I can just set this to output length and hit compose. It's now going to read everything on top here and it's just going to keep on writing here. Look at that. So uh, try vegan shampoo today. Now imagine having natural, so like uh, you could eat like the problem with regular shampoo is, and I could literally hit compose and it's going to read that and going to continue that strain of thought. That it strips your hair off its natural oils, right? You get the idea. So again, this is just literally, again, scratching the surface, not even of what's possible. Um, I just want to show you a uh, teaser already in terms of uh, how you can implement this. And hopefully you're starting to see the bigger picture, how you can literally within like an afternoon of sitting down, map out the entire year of content ideas. Literally you could like, have skipped everything we've just done and just really just use the AI tool. You're not going to have as many as good ideas and not going to be as easy to create different, uh, different topics for different personas and really get in there and create ads that actually convert. But um, you can literally just use the AI tool and to the public to come up with all of these ideas here. And then when it comes to creating all of the content, the scripts, uh, as well as the copy or the text that goes along with the videos or photos. That's where literally, if you follow the process here and you use these uh, templates, uh, as well as again, next week, I'm going to go through full on AI content training here. Uh, that is, I'm going to do a poll actually. I'm not even sure if I'm going to release that to the public yet. It's kind of private training. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much the uh, main workflow. So yeah, of course, there's way, way, way more. We can just talk about this here for two hours here, and uh, I would still be able to show you stuff. Um, but yeah, combining those two, two tools together, uh, well, this workflow here, you cannot tell me that you that you don't have the workflow when it comes to coming up with all of these ideas. And then when it comes to creation, I think when we were talking text, I think you guys just saw how easy that is. I think I already briefly showed you when it comes to actual... Uh, creative, which is a uh, market test called the actual photo or video that you see, right? This stuff here, this is no witchcraft either, right? Like literally the exact same video, like slap on a different headline and these headlines, how do I come up with these? Again, AI tool, like you can, you can come up with some headlines here, the perfect headline tool, or I, I like to use the Facebook one for, for it's a little bit more clickbaity. Um, and you can also train it with examples here. And uh, actually let's get the, Input here again, uh, vegan shampoo. And that could help you generate some headline examples. And then you maybe just split test those together. Are you tired of your hair being in a bad mood, right? Or the solution to hair loss and greasy hair. Like again, the exact same photo that you took and you just slap on different, uh, different headlines. That could be, uh, that's the wrong one. There we go. That could be the different variation, right? Is the exact same photo shoot, the exact same video shoot. You just switch out the opening shot or you switch out the opening uh, headline potentially. And uh, when it comes to creating this type of stuff, literally again, <laughs> canva.com. Uh, I'm sorry guys, right? But uh, like the, the times of like op having to open up After Effects and all of that are, are gone. Like if you are doing like custom stuff in After Effects all the time, that is just plain up stupid. The idea is to get out there Look at what's actually working and based off that you can then get feedback so let's go at the end now we now actually uh blasted through the rest here right we mapped out the content types the goals we mapped out the content calendar so now i already showed you also how you can create some of the content at least the the um the text based and the the photo stuff i don't know how to draw a photo i don't know let's do like a man there right so now i'm going to show you in a second how you can take care of the video site in an easy way um, but that's, of course, the content creation. Now that we go out there, we publish and distribute things. And then, of course, we measure and improve. So depending on all of these low quality uh, ads that you tested out here, right? So maybe um, let's go back to the, again, I showed you here. Let's say, uh, I don't know, let's create a, let's, let's, let's just create a uh, uh, thing ad again here for the uh, vegan shampoo, I guess, right? So let's let's do that. Oh, that's the wrong format. So when I get the Instagram poll, I keep clicking the wrong thing get the Instagram post and they, they even have like an auto reframe feature. But yeah, I'm sorry to tell you guys, like, again, you need to test out things uh, 
fast. Like you need to do fast testing with a lot of variations. So then once you know what's working and not what's not working, then you can get into After Effects or do some more custom stuff, right? Like this one here, like it's literally, you don't need to, uh, again, even open up After Effects pretty much for this, right? You can literally use Canva, slap out all these different variations. And uh, then you see like, hey, the one with like, maybe you test it with like a blue transition or maybe the opening shot, maybe the first clip, it's this one. And then the second clip, uh, let's just pause it real quick. The second clip, maybe you're starting with this one. And then you just see like, hey, the one where you started with the night shot, it got way more engagement than, uh, or actually uh, probably the one with the family. That's, that's what we're, the way they're doing it here, starting with the family here, right? But that's where you could be split testing. And again, that's that's not too much effort right there. And then once you know that, then you can go, can go in and maybe do a full on production or full on commercial based off what you learned here, right? So uh, again, you don't just start with like some crazy 3D stuff here. Right, so maybe it's just some some different variations. You check, make 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 sure that the headline converts, and before you actually animate this, maybe you just start with a still frame, right? Before you have this like go out and smoothly animate with like some glowing stuff there, right? Maybe just a fucking slideshow, like this, right? That might be enough to test out, and then after the first month, by measuring and improving things or measuring things, we look at the actual numbers, and then we see, hey, this variation here with this kind of content angle or this content type worked really well. So now let's go out there, right? So we had one, I don't know, like uh, a shit ton of uh, content pieces here, right? So that's, oh Jesus. That's, let's say this month we produced a total of, I don't know, 20, 20 different content pieces. And then we know exactly which ones of those performed and which ones tanked, right? Hey, this one didn't work, this one didn't work, this one didn't work, this one didn't work. But yo, this one here took off. Let, let, let's take that idea, right? Maybe that's one with a 3D thing. And let's actually use that to create three new variations that are very similar to that, right? And that's where we now spend the production budget. Actually, after we know what is working, we can take that to the next level, right? That is how you do it. So before going out there and uh, again, praying to God that that one commercial that you shoot is going to work out, we create the full funnel strategy and actually make sure that, again, we're throwing multiple spaghettis at the wall and not just one spaghetti without even looking, right? Our spaghettis are cooked and it's multiple spaghettis. This is like one uncooked spaghetti, right? You're throwing it at the wall. It's not even cooked because you don't have a strategy and you're not even looking because even if you had a strategy, you're not tracking shit. Uh, so it's literally like this is one uncooked spaghetti against the wall and this is like a bunch of cooked spaghettis so like I don't know like that's I, I just came up with that metaphor uh, analogy here so <laughs> I think it kind of makes sense so uh, yeah that is that is the workflow here so again you can use Canva um, to again I don't need to show you that guys right so like literally like my girlfriend just created this flyer uh, the other day uh, for that restaurant that we helped out and then uh I think she even took that uh, and turned it into a video. Like I showed her that Canva now has videos. And uh, let's see, did she do that? Oh, I guess so. Yeah, look at that. Like, like and my, my, my girlfriend just did that the other day. And right? she, she works at that restaurant. So like, this could be enough. Like, I, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I, 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 if you go to my YouTube channel, right? YouTube, Rob Taser. Like, you know, I'm huge into motion graphics. I love to make things look pretty. Okay, who's that guy? So, uh, and I used to do all of these Adobe After Effects tutorials and all that fun stuff. Um, but again, I'm sorry to tell you guys, those times are gone, right? If you need to get out there fast, you need to test out a shit ton of different variations, right? Maybe again, this type of thing here, and maybe one, one, one with a black background, one with an orange background, and uh, maybe one where you take, if it would load now, uh, the... One burger, one maybe with the uh, the other burger, right? Like, again, like, you don't even know which burger is going to get people to stop scrolling, right? We've got a barbecue burger, we've got a um, fish burger, and we've got a regular, like, whatever burger, right? So that's where we, again, we might take the exact same template, which is, it looks like it didn't take it here. Uh, like this one here, you guys see that, right? Yeah, it's literally maybe just a burger coming in from the side or whatever the freaking product is, right? Like, again, don't get stuck in the examples here. And... Uh, Literally, it could be we just flip out the actual product, right? Maybe it's we test out the one with the one ball, the one with the other ball, and we never had to even 
film this, right? We need some photos, of course, for this here, right? But that's just an animated photo with a drop shadow, right? So before you go out there, waste all your time and energy shooting something like with, with one sexy commercial and you don't like, you don't have no clue what actually works. Get out there, test things first and then go out there. Like now that we know like, hey, this product here got the most people to stop scrolling and check out our stuff. So now let's shoot a commercial where we really feature the details of how this product was cooked. So now you can have the like, uh, like uh, Daniel Schiffer, probe lens uh type shots to go and like all the way close up into the freaking thing like <laughs> going going crazy right now now you can start doing that right and it like it, it makes me sick like wow it's taken off here eight million jesus christ but yeah that's like you guys know the trends like you you guys are out there only focusing on this and uh like that's again why i'm preaching like crazy here because again before you make all that effort make sure well okay probably this is going to convert anyways because it's just engaging as shit if it's like a probe lens uh, but <laughs> again like this is the idea, it's like a lens that goes through things. Like but before you go out and hire that thing, again, make sure that the product you're shooting is the one that's actually getting the most people to stop scrolling or to check out the offer or whatever that may be, right? But that is month two or month three. We're actually now looking at the data and we're actually measuring and improving things. And uh, based off that, this is then the monthly service. It's an ongoing cycle that keeps going through, right? We measure and improve by looking at the goals, then we map out new content, we create that new content, we publish it, we measure and improve, and it keeps on cycling and cycling and cycling and cycling and getting better every single time, right? So now, out of this first test, we know this one took off, maybe the the one, uh, the barbecue burger was the best one, or whatever example that is for your use case here, and then we produce three commercials, all with the barbecue burger, and then maybe this one took off, and then we use that to create even more variations based off that. So again, it's Continuous cycle that literally scientific process where you go out there, we test things out, we see how things are working, and then we can go back there, readjust things and uh, keep improving. So yeah, that is the general way of how you can create all of that. Like again, if you mapped all of it out, you have your spreadsheet or whatever ready with all of the content ideas, then it's literally just sitting down for one day, writing all of the scripts, writing all of the content pieces, going to things like Canva, uh, slapping some templates together and you could literally just again get one subscription for something like Envato Elements and you could literally just take stock photos and videos. Uh, I'm not even sure. I think Canva has their own stocks and photos and videos. I'm not even sure I'm paying for it. I should know. Uh, but yeah, you could literally again, you don't need to go out there and even shoot things for your client, right? So uh, I could literally go here. Uh, where is it? I think in the elements and then uh, photos or something like, again, there's all of these things. And then of course we've got stock photos and let's say we're working with a sushi restaurant here. I could literally type in sushi and all of these I can use, right? Look at this even has like a freaking background thing cut out, right? There we go. Right. So again, like you get the idea, you just, again, create a whole bunch of different variations and then you got it. If your client is posting, uh, we do have that in the, the workflow as well here calculating your client's schedule and how many posts you need. But if you're posting like two to three posts a week, uh, you don't need too much content to have three months of content. And uh, you can, again, create that within one to maximum three days if you really sit down and you have done all of this prep work. So that's really just following that process. I showed you how you can use the AI tool to create some of the text-based stuff. How you can use Canva to create some basic uh, photo and video-based posts. And then uh, another total game changer tool is um, Descript. If you're trying to repurpose content, uh, long form content, especially, let's say you're working with influencers or anybody doing live streams or anybody doing live, uh, longer form content, uh, literally you could use this for, um, do they have it here? Uh, Descript uh, visualization, create some little snippets here. Oh, wow, didn't open the right thing create some little audiograms, they call it here. Like that could already be some content, right? You see uh, this little animated thing. They should have some freaking example here. There we go, Jesus, right? So that could be some micro content that you <laughs> that you just cut out of some longer video, right? And uh, the script itself is absolutely insane. Unfortunately, uh, it's quite small. Probably you're not gonna be able to see too much here. Uh, but you can literally, like I just used this the other day uh, just again, it generated my own voice here. You can basically deep fake and clone your voice and uh, make it say things that you never said. And uh, let me show you here. So live training, it literally just transcribes the entire video, 
and then you can cut the video without cutting it. So yeah, unfortunately I can't make this larger, I think. Yeah, no, that's not working. So yeah, you guys can see this though here, right? So there's the video on the right side. And then if I would want to make some micro content out of this here, let me actually, uh, I think I already put the section here. Uh, there we go. You can literally just highlight it, uh, have it create a title here, which uh, looks like I forgot here. Uh, have it, uh, this, uh, have it create these automated subtitles here. And then again, just select the segment that you want to export and click export. Or uh, if there's words that you don't want it to, to use, or let's say I said something here that I didn't want to say, I can literally, you see it down here. Uh, hopefully you guys can, this is quite small probably. But you see the actual, like it voice detects all of the words and you can with one click, actually two clicks, uh, you can remove all of the filler words like arms and arms. For me, it's a lot of right and again and those things that I keep saying. And I could remove all of those with one click here, as well as all of the gaps. Like I keep cutting long form video, being like, why the fuck can't can't AI do this? Like with all the AI stuff I've been doing over the past uh, one and a half years and automation stuff I've been learning, I'm like, like I, I can't believe that this was not there earlier, right? Like literally, you just click here and it's going to remove like all the pauses and you know how it's like to cut together like an interview or where somebody is uh fucking up multiple takes and then you can literally just read the takes here and just select whatever you <clears throat> let me just do that here you can just select whatever you didn't want to hear have or where they fucked up the take you delete it and it is cut that is it and you could literally come in now here and i could change this word here uh video and audio i can just type things here oh jesus it's a little bit lagging here, but it, it's basically going to deep fake my voice and create an AI version of my voice. So uh, if you don't believe me, just check out their uh, check out their their stuff here, um, their uh, promo video. Uh, it is absolutely insane. And then they even have some other voice over uh, uh, voices as well. So you don't even need to create voiceovers or record them yourselves necessarily. You could just use the AI generated voice. So get this, guys, right? You, you use AI to come up with the AI ideas. You use the AI to then create the content, like the ads I just showed you. You can use this to create full-on blog posts as well. I, again, only scratching the surface here. And then you can use AI to create automated uh, voiceovers with your voice or with other voices uh, that are ready-made for you, right? Or again, you could just use this to very efficiently cut things, and then you can always export this uh, and that's why I actually did export this to Premiere Pro and you can open it up in Premiere Pro and do your final tweaks there, right? But uh, again, this is such an efficient workflow. Again, there's always going to be pauses. There's always going to be arms and arms and literally two clicks, right? You click here and then you click on remove filler words and you can type in. For me, it's a lot of uh, times I say um, uh, like arms and arms. I don't do too often, luckily, uh, but I could type in right Right, as I say, write a lot or again, and then I can just literally click on apply to all and it's going to delete that everywhere. So within two clicks, I cut together three hours of uh, training video here, removed all the pauses, removed all the yams and arms, and uh, I can easily, very easily and fast create some micro content pieces by just again, doing some minor edits with the editor here and then exporting that through here. So <laughs> that is an insane tool as well. So yeah, then there's some other some other AI uh, video tools, um, and uh, another one might be Content Fries. This is actually not an AI tool, but uh, this is another micro content tool where you can basically you import your long form video. It's gonna generate the captions for you, and uh, then you can basically use their editor to uh, create multiple. Uh, they should have a better visualization here to create multiple content variations of it, right? So you know those. Uh, Instagram style type videos, right? With a headline at the top, there's the caption here, and it automatically generates that as well. So this is just another tool you can try out. It's called Content Fries. Um, and this one again is uh, another big one. And then there's some other tools I'm probably forgetting right now, but that is again, the high level workflow. And the, the big idea now is that you build out the system here, of course, like with everything that we're doing. So again, check out the past week's training. Like this week was a little bit more down and dirty. But uh, if you really get the entire system of what we're setting up here, which again, if you have not checked out that training yet, go to pushrec.com slash beta. Like you're absolutely insane if you're not watching that before it goes down. Because literally we're going through each of these steps here in minute detail. And again, that's going to then help you to 
fully systemize all of these steps where you don't need to worry about your marketing systems at all. Those are running. You don't need to worry about your sales system where you know exactly this is how we're going to turn complete strangers into paying clients. And then when it comes to the service delivery aspect here, right now, this might still sound, and it is a lot of work, right? But which is why you're getting paid like two up to maybe even $5,000 a month uh, per client for six to 12 month contracts, right? That's where, of course, we need to do some systemization here as well. And where you can eliminate, automate and delegate a bunch of these things as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's again, too detailed here. Uh, can't share everything on the call here. Again, if you join the beta group, you're going to get my full on like SOPs, checklists, how you help with onboarding teammates to help you fully outsource this as well. So you can, again, remove yourself from that equation. Uh, but again, I, I can't uh, include everything here in this one training, of course. So again, go check out uh, the uh, pushrec.com slash beta sign up there if you have not done so already we're actually going to extend uh, that uh, launch period for one more week because we had some technical issues with this uh, this week's life as well as some people uh, that want to use different payment options so i'm right now figuring out how we can uh, take payments there uh, but again before, once spots are open we already have like uh, three or four people that joined last week here um, this will go down right i, I will not have the these bonuses to the public forever so make sure to sign up here. You're going to get the full uh, worksheet here, the replays from last week, as well as um, I think at this point, it's like t between 20 and 30 hours of these live trainings contents. Uh, so let me just see your beta member. So this is where, oh shit, that's not the one. Bootcamp member. So that's where you get uh, access to if you sign up all of these trainings and then last week most specifically you go and check out how to sell and deliver yearly content retainers right so go link is up here go check that out and uh it's pretty much a full-on well it is a full-on course i would say <laughs> so yeah but again this is something something else right we're going to help you book at least 30 meetings in 60 days guaranteed right so pushrate.com slash beta and uh that's where again if you sign up for this one here there's going to be another bonus training for uh i'm gonna do a poll next week see how kind of receptive you guys are for that but 99 sure that will be coming otherwise it's just for the people in this beta group because when it comes to the actual like uh templates for the ai tool like i i can't share it all because uh like i want to make sure you guys have have that unfair advantage at least for a while because again anybody not leveraging these ai tools you will get cut out over the long term i can guarantee you that Maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but you you need to you need to realize that you are again video production as a craft is dying. People these needs, days need content, right? So, like literally, you can go to Google Trends and just look up video production. Like just do that, guys. Look up video production and look up content marketing. Of course, you're not gonna be become a content marketer, but. Uh, and that's not everything you're going to be doing, right? But you need to look at it in the context of what is it that you're actually helping your clients. And again, the, the, all of that we discussed in crazy detail uh, in the last trainings. Uh, but again, as a whole video production, like it is dying, guys. Like content is the name of the game. Uh, actually, like, again, there's, there's, of course, that is not all you're going to be selling, but you need to look at it again in terms of what is it that your client needs, which is some form of this. You don't need to again go as crazy as we've done it here, but you need to know roughly who is going to check out this content, what worked in the past and what didn't, where are we even going to be posting this content, what types of content could we post here, and what would success look like in terms of numbers, and then, of course, plan that out, create it, publish it and actually measure things. And if you do that, again, you are so far ahead of the, the curve when it comes to all the other videographers who are literally, when it comes to getting your clients from where they're at, the current situation, to their desired situation, which is usually, again, getting away from their pains and towards their desires. Most other video people are literally, like, maybe they help them, like, do some very basic, well, probably not that, right? So, like, most likely they come up with, like, some storyboards and a video, and that's it, right? So, like, again, you are helping your clients in that case with all of these other hurdles while the competitors are only helping them make that one step. So who are they going to go with, right? Again, I don't want to talk about that in too much detail here today, but that is the high level 
workflow, you guys. So I hope it now sounds a little bit less uh, crazy bold on how to create three months of content in three days. And again, we're still scratching the service here, guys. Like again, if you sign up for that beta uh, program, you will literally get a full on workspace for content creation and management, uh, standard operating procedures will help you uh, hi hire this out if this is something you don't want to be doing, as well as of course, a fully automated, well, I mean, not of course, but uh, again, I've been building all of these systems over the past, uh, two, three years of working with one-on-one uh, -on -one clients, especially over the last years, I've been going hard on uh, automation and learning things there. That's where we uh, literally have full-on content planning, creation, like you just saw this workflow here, which again, we we then take this here and fully automated, can schedule this out to social media and like a lot of other crazy shit that I can't even like show you guys here in the public live training. So again, if you have not done so already, go ahead, go to pushrec.com slash beta sign up there if you have not done so already because otherwise you will miss out there and again this is not even talking about uh you joining the program this is literally just the bonuses that we're that we're talking about here for anybody that signs up and then if you get to join here then i mean you're you're sorted anyways right we're gonna book you at least all these clients on the calendar uh meetings and then of course map out this full strategy together uh and again i'm, I'm not even gonna show you that workspace now i i'm gonna keep that private for now so yeah that's been the major part of the training i'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick and then i'll see if there's any questions so i see there was a question here on facebook um uh, there was another tool that was like canva you've talked about in our meeting do you still recommend it over canva or is it a different tool together uh yeah there's another one called offio um i used that before because i got a lifetime plan on it uh but I like uh, I like Canva more. So they also have a bunch of templates. They use AI, like AI to cut out the image, but Canva has all of that. And uh, it's a bit more superior. And then there's a bunch of other tools. So there's like a whole industry that is called content automation, guys, right? That's where like uh, these brands like Canva, uh, not Canva, uh, Casper, I can guarantee you guys, they're not manually creating all of these variations. Uh, there's basically tools that automate all of that. So you can basically, again, like that's, that's more of the, the workflows I would, uh, I am still reserving for people that are in the beta group, right? So, uh, if you want to get all the craziness, of course, uh, join there. Uh, but that is again, some of these tools here, maybe this one they've done manually here, but yeah, you can basically upload spreadsheets that then automatically create all of these different variations and headlines, right? So you create one template. And then you can automate things. Um, that's again, for, for all of my one-on-one -on -one clients, other people in the beta group, you're going to get uh, copy-paste systems that you can use to basically, again, build one template and then use automations to switch out all of these headlines at scale. So, yeah. Uh, I'm not joking around here, guys. So, yeah, but that is the high-level workflow. So whether or not you use AI on automation or not, I mean, if you are using AI on automation, you're, of course, ahead of the curve. And uh, even more if you join our beta group, of course. Don't want to sound like a broken record picture myself on my own shit here, but it is insane. So, uh, yeah. All right. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick, actually, guys. Uh, and then I'll see if there's any other final questions and we'll wrap things off here. Uh, let me just put some text here. Be right back. Bathroom break. All right. So, back at 45, whatever time is for you, I guess. Yeah, I, should, I should make a coming soon thing with a timer. Uh, I don't have that yet, though. All right. All right, back in a second.
Alrighty. Okay. So yeah, that would be it for today. Looks like there's no more questions. All right. Yes, let me know. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah sure sure like it's so you, you cannot do like minimum of three months or like it's just month yeah in that case you would like in the first month basically map out most of the strategy uh because, like, of course, like, everything from here until, like, mapping it out on the calendar, right? Well, actually, of will the top section here. It's going to take, like, two, three weeks probably to, uh, like, get that everything confirmed with the client, right? I mean, you can, like, come up with all these ideas, create the calendar, and then, of course, you're going to sit down with the client, map all of that out. And that's where, then, depends on how much they're paying you and how, how much you did, when, can deliver, right? Do you have a team? in place or not so i know you don't have one yet so we're of course going to be limited by you uh but uh that's where i mean if you find some uh again let's say you have some some templates for uh for again different different quotes different different types of these these formats and uh you can you, the, the client maybe already has photos you can create like five posts a week right maybe 50 in the first month but if, if the, that's going to again be dependent on the budget and uh your constraints there so it's going to be different from from client to client depending on the the types of content you're creating like if it's uh let's say you want to shoot like a mini documentary as part of your content plans every month then of course that's going to be a lot of work that goes to that and then maybe creating those micro content pieces like that one documentary might take you 2 weeks to produce and then um you turn that into micro content pieces and just some general other like photos you took while shooting and other micro content that the quote unquote low quality work that might be 30 content pieces that you create in two days, right? So you can't like one by one say like, hey, this is how much you are gonna be selling, right? If that kind of answer, answered your question, or I'm not quite sure. So yeah, for sure. So yeah, there's no like sets. So that's what we'll, we'll figure that out. I will say in our next call, let's, let's book another one-on-one -on -one call. And then next week we're starting the two other uh, kind of secret group beta co coaching sessions here as well. And then we can uh, map that out because I'm going to be, I'll, I'm, I'll be looking into this Fiverr thing then here and uh, just see how that, like I have some sample of deals here actually on Fiverr just to find out how it works. So I'm going to check this out here and then we'll see how we can use it. Mm-hmm. Perfect, perfect. So yeah, well, we'll figure that out. So yeah, I see they've got like three months, six months. Cool. So yeah, that's that's the only concern is uh, I would usually start with minimum of three month contracts because uh, usually the first month, if, especially if these like long term working with a client, you're like getting him onto like your Slack channel, all these little things that like I just can't cover in this one training here. Of course, like you're in the beta group, so you don't need to worry that. We'll, we'll figure out the onboarding together. But there's all of these little things that um, I like to, again, have that minimum contract length of three months because especially that feedback loop. Oh, shit, I just deleted it here. There we go. Right, where after that first month, we then know, hey, this stuff here uh, works, this doesn't work, and then we can create another batch based off that, which is going to be way better than the first uh, content that we created. So that's why usually, like, minimum three months. But if that's possible, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. And then the kind of different... Uh, that's where you can have different types of packages. Uh, after working with one client, you'll know roughly... Okay, I'm gonna need this much time to create this type of content or this amount of content. And I know you're doing 3D stuff, so that's a lot of uh, variables there. But at the same time, it's less variables than shooting something. So we'll figure it out. Sure thing. So yeah, I would say let's book our book our next call then. Sometimes, sometime next week. And uh, 
yeah let me see any other questions we got here now we get cool so yeah that was a chill stream not really completely fucked up promotion here for this week oh well that's where we got the replays but yes uh, starting next week i'll, I'll uh, already asked you what times work best for you uh, i'm gonna ask some more people and we're gonna do the uh the beta calls then for the beta group starting next week and again anybody that might be watching this here if you haven't signed up yet uh, again at least check out that video i highly urge you to do that you're going to get access to the to the b uh, bonuses here the uh, worksheet i just showed you as well as uh, then uh, you get the option to book a call and actually secure a spot in this beta as well so there's free stuff for everybody and then if you join it's literally guaranteed that you get your results here so cool all righty then yeah, I would say good night, Jeremy. And uh, anybody else that might be watching, I think, oh yeah, you're, you're the only one on Zoom right now. So it's almost a one-on-one -on -one call here then. All right, yeah, we'll book a call then next next week. You got the link. And uh, you can you can always let me know on Slack if you do have questions, Jeremy. Cool. All right, so now I need to figure out how to, how to end the stream. Yeah, you too, man, good night. I need to figure out how to end the stream here now. All right, take care, man, bye-bye.